Welcome to the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for May 3rd, 2023. The time is 6.01 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Please note that while an option for a remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room in the Deerfield Municipal Offices. The remote participation information um, is listed on our agenda, which you can find on the Town of Deerfield's website under this meeting for the select board. If you'd like to call in, the Toll-free number is 833-548-0276. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. And on that agenda, you'll see a Zoom link. You can join by Zoom. If you're on your phone, you can hit star six to mute your phone. And please mute unless you're asking a question. Please uh, wait until others are done speaking until you speak. And then just state your name and where you're from. So I'll call the meeting to order. The first bit of it on the agenda is reorganization of the board. So um, I want to thank everybody that came out on our election. It was uh, a little low turnout, but I guess everybody's kind of pleased with how things are rolling. So there was not any contested election. So uh, everybody was elected and um, it is now time to reorganize this board. So uh, I would... I would make a motion to um, elect Carolyn Shores Ness chair for the following year. I'll second it. We have a second. And um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, and I. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Carolyn asked that I just kind of uh, still chair the, the meeting for tonight and then we'll swap over it. Underneath. You know what? We should probably do the Board of Health too. And I. Oh, I yes. We do need to do that and clerk, right? Yes, and I don't mind continuing as the chair of the Board of Health. Fine with me, too. Do you have any objection to that? So I'll make a motion to appoint Carolyn Shores next, uh, the chair of the Board of Health. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Um, um, I will make a motion to uh, elect Trevor McDaniel as clerk. It's usually it is the, oh, yeah. the, the, the outgoing. Yeah, <laughs> so that's fine. Second. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> all right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. And we don't have a chair of the sewer commissioners. I think we just all act the yeah. same, right? There isn't a chair for that. Good. No, not really. Perfect. Although, just, is been... this mic working? I can't tell for myself. It doesn't sound like it. Um. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Like this. Is it? It's mine working. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tim, I can hear you about as well as the others. Okay. Good. Thank you. Although, if maybe we should, I mean, I I I would vote you as chair of the commissioners. Well, I think I think chair of the board can be chair. I mean, I think chair of the board will be the chair of the sewer commissioners. Well, except that you're just been the point person. Would you continue to do? That? Yeah. I'll continue okay. to do that. That's All fine. Right. Yep. For the for the plant. Um, okay. So let's see, we have a couple of minutes before our first um, appearances. Um, do you want to knock out the minutes first? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, so we have minutes that we didn't get to last time, but we do now have. Um, so uh, I'll make a motion to um, approve the minutes of April 5th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Great. And then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for April uh, 11th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Great. Um, 
I just want to hit on a couple quick things while we're getting started here. There's a Union 38 Field Hockey uh, Summer Clinic for 2023. This is an introductory program for girls going into grades four through six from the towns of Deerfield, Waitley, Sunderland, and Conway. Mary Ellen Sloan and uh, Evan Grant, last year's coaches of our girls field hockey team, will sponsor a five-day clinic. The focus will be on skill development with a variety of drills and, and learning scenarios. They will provide uh, hockey sticks, um, field hockey sticks, balls, and shin guards if needed for the girls who register. There's an equipment deposit. We ask the girls to bring a mouth guard, uh, snack, and water bottle each day. It is August 14th through the 18th from 9 a.m. to 11.30 p.m., and that'll, um, that'll be at the Frontier Regional uh, Field Hockey um, at the field outside. Um, you must pre-register. There's a maximum of 20 girls, so you can call the Deerfield Recreation Department at 665 one four zero zero extension one oh seven or email uh R E C D E P T rec depart at uh Deerfield dot uh, excuse me at town dot deerfield dot M A dot U S and there's registration forms online. Um the fees are a hundred dollars second sibling is fifty dollars equipment deposit is fifty dollars so separate checks please so that's that also um and others may be talking about this too but I wanted to remind everybody it's Founders Day weekend. May 5th through the 7th. Um, so on, on May 7th, the 1673, the General Court of Massachusetts Bay Colony recorded in its, minute, in its minutes in answer to the petition of the inhabitants of Pocumtuck, Samuel Hinsdale, Sampson uh, Frary, and company, the court judgeth it met fitting uh, to allow the petitioners the liberty of a township, May 7th, 2023, marks Deerfield's 350th birthday. So there's um, Friday students at the Deerfield Elementary School have been crafting commemorative bells, which will be strung adjacent to the meeting house on uh, Friday, May 5th in the morning. Students will uh, be led from the school to the site by the Frontier Marching Band. Should be great fun and memorable experience. All are welcome to attend on Saturday, there's a community gathering will be held on the lawn between the old meeting house and the Tilton Library, uh, Saturday, May 6th from 1 to 4. So uh, come bring a chair or picnic lunch, enjoy the festivities, the commemorative uh, gallon of balls uh, or bells will be on exhibit. A Farley String Band will provide music, musical entertainment, the Stone Soup Cafe Culinary Institute will provide uh, pay what you can, light refreshment and students and a parent are invited to toll the meeting house bell with a goal of ringing it 350 times. Commemorative buttons and ice cream will be given to the bell ringers by friends of Deerfield. Uh, you chalk art on the sidewalk. Sunday, uh, join us at um, on Sunday afternoon at Frontier Regional Auditorium from one to four uh, for two events. There's a recognition ceremony for the uh, Deerfield Elementary students who designed uh, a pictorial postmark for the um, U.S. Post Office from one to two. And then Gary Sanderson will share his extensive research on the life and times of the early Bloody Brook neighborhood from two to two to three thirty. refreshments following. So please join us for that. That should be should be good events. A um, couple more minutes. Anything else you want to hit on? Do you want to? Yes, I just want to thank um, Melissa and Jim Perot uh, across the street from the con Congregational Church. They they worked with um, Peter Thomas, and they did a lovely job cleaning up the front of the church and planting new plantings. And um, Peter it cleaned up the sign and made, you know, put the announcement of Founders Day on there, and he'll change it after Founders Day. But great. everything looks so nice and That's so great. appreciative. And so I just wanted Melissa and Jim to know how much we um, appreciated them doing that work, that gardening work. That was great. lovely. And also just thank people for coming to town meeting. And it would have been nice if there was more yeah. than just like voting. And we wish there was more, but we just thank everyone that was participatory in our yeah. democratic process. And so that was really nice. It's very good. Yep. I, an hour and a half for a meeting was I mean, unheard that, of. I think that's probably the <laughs> record. Record. Yeah. All time record worked out really well. Um, I have a board of health couple, just a couple things. Ticks are out wicked. Just please do tick checks. Um, make sure that we do. We still subsidize the tick test. The state is no longer subsidizing the test, so, but it's still a little bit discounted. So if you have a 
a, a bite, please send it in to get tick tested. Um, a, it's been consistent. A third of our ticks have Lyme disease. So this is for peace of mind. What is concerning is the other uh, additional bacterial infections have been increasing. They're now a little over 10%, and that started out at 2%. So over the years, it's definitely increased. And they are worse, actually, to have those diseases than Lyme disease. So peace of mind, know if your ticket's got um, you know, something in it, mm -hmm. and then you can talk to your doctor. Um, and also mosquitoes are starting to come out. Been wet. Uh, and um, our, we'll start testing next, uh, not this next week, but the week after. So, okay. And um, I just have one small thing. Um, there have been some questions about the uh, sidewalks that are um, being put in by MassDOT along Sugarloaf Street. And we've reached out to the director of District 2 to just consult about um, the direction of the rest of the project. Uh, in review, hoping that we can get full cement sidewalks rather than this intermix of asphalt and cement. So as soon as we learn anything more about that, we'll share it with you. They're looking good. Nice to see some work done. Um, well, uh, I think we've got two minutes. Why don't we, um, you want to do the vacancy notice and the, for, okay. So we've got a letter of um, retirement uh, uh, sadly, from uh, Brenda Austin, uh, Deborah Austin, uh, who is uh, works yeah. at, in the police department and has for many years, and uh, she's just been wonderful. But her, um, this letter is is for the intent of my retirement, effective at the end of day on June thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Um, so they, I just can't say enough about her and how uh, how she's been such a integral part of that department in the town. Um, I remember starting when I was on the school committee or just getting involved, she would bring her miniature horse over to the fun fair, you know, just, she was just always doing things for the community and the kids. And that was just really special. And then she's just, it's just been a rock in that uh, police department and just answering everybody's questions and take care she of everybody always, in there. She always Wonderful. came in for emergencies when we had yep. flooding and she always came and answered phones and Amazing. any kind of weather Dedicated. event. She was there. Yeah. Um, we'll miss her. She, we're really going to miss her. Yep. She will be missed. So what you see is John and I had a conversation. He's very concerned about not having co consistent coverage. So he wants us to put, he wants me to put the vacancy notice out and the job description. And so what I did yesterday was I sent, and I spoke to the both of them. I sent the job description out to them with the new format. Um, it hasn't substantially changed, but I wanted the board to take a look at it. And I sent personnel board a request to do the same. Okay. Um, we do have to have some sort of draft job description when we put the vacancy notice out. So if there are changes, I think there'll probably be changes in the essential functions, but I did try right. to capture all of it. Uh, based on review of the old job description and the newer format that we had gotten from Collins Center. Right. So for purposes of, of giving people an idea of what the special requirements are and what the essential duties are, I think that covers it. Yep. If the board would be willing to um, approve that so I can put it up, yep. then we can start the hiring process and have some overlap Ooh. training. Uh, I make that good. motion. Yeah. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. We're Great. Okay. Uh, perfect timing. So, Tom, Tom and, and Joyce, do you want to come up and visit? And then we could call the um, boo. You could chair? chair. Yes, you get the comfy chair. How are you? Welcome. Um, I, Tom, I would just want to say, um, I know. it's lovely to thank you, thank have you. you here is your last official meeting. I know. I'm so, um, hopefully. Well, <laughs> actually I got one at seven. So. Oh, oh, you, you do, do have one at oh, seven. Okay. okay. Well, we will well, take a ton I, of time. I just, I just want to say thank you. It's been lovely to work with you for, I don't Ever. know, 20, Ever. 24 years, a long time. 
You couldn't do one more year to get that 25. I know, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> to do one more, you had to pick out your options. Right. There's no <laughs> there's no one year yeah. option. I don't know about your town clerk, but our, our town clerk don't let you go halfway through and likely just yeah. mm-hmm. live to tell them. Well, I've been I've been honored to work with you. I, I you know, when I first started getting involved with town government, the first I think one of the first things was to get on the boo and 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 uh on both boards of oversight the south county ems we're just starting with that and on the with the seniors as well and um you were an amazing leader to learn from and um you always had regional um partnership in mind whenever you do things and i'm just super proud to have worked with you and learned from you we I just got a lot, a lot more to do aren't isn't there yes there is so a lot more to do yep Good. but i just want to say thank you tom thank you. don't it's lose our phone number it's lovely to work with you for all these years <laughs> We don't need to keep saying 24 because right, exactly. it's like, oh, my God, that is so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so do you want to call the boo to order? Great. Um, yeah. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> how are you? Good. Did you throw your sycamore candle? Yes, I did. Good. Thank you. Nice. Uh, at this time, is was Jennifer coming? or is she? Uh, Jennifer texted me. She can't come. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, an emergency. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Right. Well, so at this time, I'd like to call the Board of Oversight to order. Sounds good. Thank that, you both for coming, the, Joyce. Thank you, too. Myself, Trevor, and Joyce. Yep. Um, so we were trying to, um, last time we met, we talked about feasibility study and um, trying to work on a plan for where we're going forward. We have I think we've calculated 11 months to go before we hit a maximum payout at the church before before we have to go out for an RFP to find a place um, because of, I guess, procurement laws. Yes. So we have to kind of think about where we're going to go in the next year. We um, we have the money for the feasibility study, which we're hoping to um now there are town meetings over, hoping to grab uh, FERCOG to help with doing that. Andrea, if she can, to move that forward. But I guess there was some question on scope of work. We need, we need the scope outline. So we should maybe have a quick discussion on scope. And then um, and then we had this $100,000 from uh, Joe Comerford's office, which kind of expires pretty quick unless we do something with it. And we're trying to kind of figure out what we should do with it. Um, and I don't, I know that um, Casey was going to see if they would push it forward, but wasn't, I don't think so. wasn't really excited about that opportunity. They, well, it, we have to give them an explanation and it's called packing it forward. Um, I haven't spoken to, I found out about this in mid April. Um, and I, reached out to Senator Comerford's office and they re- they responded to me and I said, look, I need to have a conversation um, because if we don't want to lose the earmark, we have to commit to doing some work in the senior in the old church to provide senior services, which we could do even on an intermittent basis. Um, I just don't want to lose that money if we can help it because she went out of her way to get it. So we're hoping to get ideas like, what do we do? Uh, can't we start that feasibility study like yesterday? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, not I think, without well, a scope choice. So, oh, yeah, so can, scope. okay, then let's then, get a scope tonight. And okay, I, I guess back it. when we approved it in January, it would have been nice to know that the next step is yeah. to need a scope because yep. this is this four months wasted that we could have been getting things done. Right. So scope, it's, how do we do a scope? That's my question. So I guess we should talk about I, I thought part of the scope in my understanding was to see if that building was um, environmentally safe for a senior yeah. center and two, did it have enough space to be made environmentally safe? If... Yeah. Or could, yeah. Can it be, like, is can it, it now or can in... it be, or how much would it take to do that? Um, and I think we've done a lot in yeah. that work already, like remove the asbestos and stuff, but we'd need to kind of a, I think we may have sign-offs on a lot of that stuff that it has been removed, but what else do we need to do as far as air quality, the cushions that are in there, like all that kind of stuff needs to come out. So a scope of work to make sure it's environmentally safe. um, And then does it provide enough space using the 
sanctuary and the fellowship hall and the kitchen, the other office to support us as a temporary five year space um, until we decide what else we want to do. Um, is there, go ahead. You had I a have question. a question. Are we uh -huh. doing a scope for temporary use of the space or? Unless somebody has another idea or there's another tree of money out there we could shake. I don't know of another chunk of land or another spot or, I mean, we've been doing this a while. I don't know of another place to go, but we could do an RFP for space, but. I really don't think we have much space available based yeah. on, you know, conversations that Jeff and I have had with Brian and just knowing that it's hard to find space. Um, the earmark itself is for construction. I mm -hmm. did get confirmation from Jared in Senator Comerford's office. So if we're not going to do anything, we're going to get him money back. We're going to. Yeah. So we're talking about two different really earmarks. Yeah, yeah, we are. We yeah. are. Okay. There's, there's one is the hundred thousand. And then the other one is that. 75. 75. But yeah. yeah. Which we, that was the intent for that was to do the feasibility. Stuff. Right. But um, I just want everybody to understand that if there's no movement on making any construction, doing any construction on that building, we lose it. Mm -hmm. It won't pack it forward. Well, I, I, I think. But you feel like that's, that's kind of a, that's a Deerfield issue. Right. right. Um, if we can make a clear scope and get that feasibility mm -hmm. study, that's a boo issue. So can we focus on the feasibility study? Mm -hmm. um, I think if it, can it meet the space needs and can it be made environmentally safe? Yeah. And specifically, you seem to have addressed a lot of the asbestos already. Right. Maybe that is something that should be checked and tested. Right. Of course. Is there residual anywhere? Yeah. Um, and the other obvious thing being the mold. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess uh, the other Thing for feasibility is like what will it cost to keep the building running mm -hmm. um i know it's got a it's got an old it, and it may be that that turns into a plan for how do we do this more efficiently right uh, but like long term long -term, and like what are the long term costs associated with using that space mm -hmm. if it were to have enough space which i suspect with some work it probably will yeah um i'm less optimistic about the mold situation mm -hmm. um but you know that that I, I i'm willing to see what the experts say about that right um and then uh, understanding the long-term cost because if we don't between three towns have the you know the commitment to put that kind of money into it mm -hmm. um on you know the, just the long-term cost then that's right. going to fail Ultimately, I, sure. Yeah. It's it's our plan. So those three seem to be the the things that we need to nail down. How does that need to be written into a scope? Yeah, it's it's our plan that that will be a building that will be serviced with um, geothermal or yeah, my, our campus plan. Yeah. So, um, so ultimately will that be, will ultimately, become a lower yeah. cost. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's the intention right yeah. along. Otherwise, I mean, if we don't get the geothermal right away, mini splits. Mm -hmm. Can that was used. the original budget was to kind of outfit that Fit, place with many splits, splits but for the for the meantime um but yeah so we need to pull oh, go. So, so where do you as i see it okay i i think joyce joyce's comments are, are right on point i i think for us to consider and and, and i'd like to i think we need to talk five year mm -hmm. ten year versus one year right the one year thing gets us confused a lot yep and and we and we keep going in these one year cycles. So if you talk five years, and, and I'm just using that as a number right now. Yeah. I, I, I think the first thing we have to do is we have to identify in a in a short term, five years is a short term now, is yeah. that it's safe to move into um the the congregational church. Yeah. And and once it once it's determined that it's safe, then it then it's really up to yeah. yeah. Well, it's up to you say field. determine it safe. This feasibility study is about determining what do we need to do to make it safe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And and what's up? What's a ballpark estimate of what that will cost? Because it will cost. Actually, we. I think we're we're down. We're going down a path of. Yeah. We're independently looking at the building if we don't use it as senior center. So uh, we've done a lot of structural engineering. We're gonna. We have a plan in place to do no, that I, more. So the feasibility study, as I understood it, was 
is is that space large enough? Is can it be made uh, to suit the needs of of this of a senior center community center? Um, and then you mentioned at the last meeting that there was a component of doing a study within five miles to see if there's any other space available, or is that off the table now? No, I, I think I actually think that it would it would it would have to be on the table so so that we can make we can make an honest you know honest determination because. Part of the feasibility is going to tell us how much it's going to cost, as Joyce was saying, how much is it going to cost? And so if the renovation is going to cost $10 million to make it into a senior center, yet we could buy a piece of property and, and you know, from and negotiate with DDIC and buy a place that they, and I'm not saying, I'm just using mm -hmm. a reference, yeah. that we could buy a piece of property for $200,000 and build a new, a new facility for five. I, I mean that when we start weighing the weighing the option, mm -hmm. but I, so so I think you, you, what we have to do is say a is the building safe after it has uh, remediation? You know, go in there. And and what is that remediation going to cost? Can it be safe? Made safe to do so. The second thing is what George was saying. Does it have enough square footage? And is the 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 way that it's configured is it conducive to having a senior center? Mm -hmm. Because there's certain things like we wouldn't want a lot of right, stairs. Right. And we've talked about that yep. in, in the senior center. Yeah. And 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 then in probably the most important part, I think the three town. I I always have reservations when it comes to Deerfield putting the bill mm -hmm. for the entire project. I don't know if that's what we should do. I think that we should talk about, um, like they did up in, case Shelburne, Buckland, and yeah, and Ashfield. Ashfield. And in 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 kind of form a group, and then and then the three towns would share in the expenses, and and I think that may be a, a something that that would be easier for the town of Deerfield. And here we go again, paying for everything, and I, I and and I think long term, it, it may help us to do something like that versus just one town have to do everything. I, I just don't so, see that as I don't see that as feasible. No, I I I, I somewhat agree with that as well. I, I um and it feels like there's a long term plan of that, and then a short term plan of like, can we get in? Like we're going to make that place usable regardless. So, um, what we were thinking was get going with the feasibility study, either kiss the hundred thousand goodbye or just start putting it into making it usable because we're going to use it at, our intention is to use it as a temporary senior center so if they if they would allow us to spend the money to do kitchen remodel or pull out the pews and flooring and that kind of stuff to make it usable for a community space and our 100 percent intention is for the seniors if the boo is willing to and seniors are going in there i'd hate to just lose that money while we're waiting on a senior, you know, on the on the feasibility study, if we could get both tracks going at once, we have some structural to do in the roof and the floor and some water stuff in the bottom. So we're going to move forward with that stuff anyways. And then long term, like RFP, does it make sense to then? So we've got a temporary space. We're good for five years. Then we have this other track of like, OK, do, can we come up with five million bucks or six million bucks from the three towns and either build something new or rehab this one even more, you know, even more um, substantially for a long, long 10, 15, 20 year plan? So I feel like there's kind of two can tracks. I, can I, can I sure. Okay. I mean, it's, it's it's a long conversation. I don't know if you'll figure all of that out tonight, but, but what the most important thing, what I want to figure out tonight is we're submitting a grant for Community One stuff for a pre-construction grant for up to a million dollars. And in order to do that, to say a temporary senior center, community center, we would need letters of support. It's not that we're going to tie you to it and say, this is the apps, you know, this is going to be the permanent senior center. But if we don't have that, I don't think the grant is going to fly. So if we can't do that, then I think we're going to have to pivot with the grant and say, we're going to do it for a community center for Deerfield and for senior services, because 45% of our, of our town residents are over the age of 55. So I think we would still have a really good chance of getting the grant. So that's have a better chance if it's for senior yeah. services for regionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that this grant is due June 2nd. So 
I have to know pretty soon which way to pivot, how to write this grant. In the meantime, we are going to be taking all of the soft materials out. We just have to set a date for that. Yeah. I already have a contractor coming in next week to look at the basement as far as um, any kind of vapor barrier. Uh, the chief, I mean, we've talked to, we have someone coming in hopefully next week or the following week to look at the foundation, whether we have to raise it, we've got to shore up the foundation either you know fix the stones or pour a concrete foundation mm -hmm. and then we also have i think julie has we have information on doing the structural elements so we have all of that because i do need that information for the grant for the budget but the big question is i mean we can go on and on about what we should do for the next five years but i need this information by june 2nd and you know, to do the temporary senior center, and obviously we're not going to put anyone in there until it's safe. As far as I know, we've had the asbestos removal. Um, we have so, an environmental evaluation. We're going to end up probably putting mini splits in anyway, un unless we get a geothermal, which I actually reached out, sent an email to Eversource today because they're doing a pilot project in Framingham, but that's a residential project. So I reached out to them to see if you know, to talk about if they're going to do anything for municipalities. So there are lots of balls in the air right now, but we just have to have, I just have to know. I even have sample letters of support. If you guys would be willing to write a letter of support, and if not, then we're going to have to change tact on this. So that's really, that's really, you know, the question. Yeah, and the letter of support doesn't, obviously doesn't force you to go in. It just no. gives you support towards a our five-year plan of getting the seniors in that spot, but um, I'd be a lot more sympathetic if we have seen. I've not seen any of these environmental assessments. They've mm -hmm. not been sent to the board of oversight. No, I think we have. I, right. I believe I asked for these at previous meetings, and someone said they would email them, and those have never come. I I don't have any of. You say you have all of these things. I've not seen any of them. And I know we approved, hey, let's go forward with this right. this, this feasibility study months ago, mm -hmm. only to find out now. So it's just it just seems to be getting delayed and well, delayed and delayed. So if all of these things are really so simple, and so why didn't they're not simple? And I think the other issue is is that in as like, you isn't know, that vapor ba isn't the cost of a vapor barrier part of the feasibility study? Like well, it's not feasible for that place to be continuing to be mold free unless there's this vapor barrier. So I, I, that's part of it. That's so what we need to see in black and white. Part and of I this. really feel like I, you know, or, I, I'm just, I'm really frustrated. Well, here, let me, let me help with that frustration. We are too, because very limited. We're all volunteers, right? We have a I, couple of people that work that. and we're immensely overwhelmed. And so Everything kind of gets dropped until yeah. you can grab it, until you have a meeting. You're like, oh, we should have done this. We should have done that. There's just not enough people in local government to do all the things we want to do. So as much as we'd love to have it all done already and have it perfectly, you know, we're not we're not big cities with a ton of staff to I, do it all. So I'm not expecting you to be, but know. the $75,000 grant starting months and months yeah. ago. Still. And a feasibility. There are people who can do the feasibility studies. Right. I know we need a scope. Yeah, but maybe that should have been at our January meeting. It, they all and should have. If all we need to have is a scope, let's get the scope done and get that mm -hmm. feasibility study going, and then let's talk about. Could I suggest um, a course of action that the boo, maybe you, Joyce, write what you think needs to be in a scope, share it with Casey and Tom. If you're want to do that as well, Trevor can do it, um, and so we can develop the scope. Well, we have a and, yeah, we have a meeting next week. For, and and we can certainly think about that. But wouldn't this have been a really nice thing to tell us back in January? Mm -hmm. It would have. But that, a lot of like, this is we don't know either. I'm not. I, I'm not a. Uh, I just don't know how local government works. I've been doing this seven years. I'm learning every okay. day. So, so when we asked for the money things. for a feasibility study, we didn't know what you need for a feasibility study. It sounds yeah, like. Yeah, well. I mean, I, I'm, I I'm just I'm trying to understand here how we got to the place where we are, because we always seem to be in that place where it's like, here, you need to write us a letter to say the senior center is going in this church. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that I think the until I know what the cost the of letter. that place being safe and mold free mm -hmm. and, and friendly 
to people with all kinds of health problems. I mean, really, it really can't be a place where there's mold spores. Of course not. Yeah. Yeah. So none of our staff, uh, nobody would be in there otherwise. So uh, that right. all uh, can be remediated. I think we've been correct. Really clear about this though from the start. Correct. So it sounds like what we need to do is move forward on the feasibility study. We're going to talk to FERCOG. We're going to see if they can write an RFP. We have to get a scope of work in the interim. And it doesn't seem like we need to wait for a boo like meeting budget. to have yeah. a scope of work start be developed. Right. If we wait until the boo meeting, that means that we've done nothing for the two weeks that in the interim. Well, there's one week in the interim and well, one do week. something in between. I mean, yeah. if you're, you're talking about developing something, like we need developing, that sounds like it takes a long time. I feel like we just did it in five minutes. I, yeah, well, that's why I'm saying so. If you write your things down and send it in an email and then get it approved a week from now, right now. Yeah, you're ready to go. I, I, I think that's great. Because I, I think Joyce just listed them. So the first thing is you want it to know if it's safe. Environmentally Can you safe. Type this down? <laughs> Let's just develop the thing right now. It sounds like yes. as as we yes. may have the data already. Is and it? mold is going to definitely require some kind of remediation. And what will that cost? Right. So, 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 so safe, the, the safety issues. Right. Mm -hmm. But we want it to be safe. And what is the cost of and, safe? And what will what will it cost to make that place? Right. OK, then um, this is all in the grant. That's all in the budget. Okay. Then if it's all in the grant, well, that's going to be in the budget. There. But we we're trying to get I'm trying to get um, numbers for the budget and it's not going to matter. It's the not, scope of work, I think, that this is, we want someone to come in and do this feasibility study. It's not going to happen have, they before June the people, 2nd. That's sorry. the problem. Feasibility study realistically will not be finished by June 2nd. We have well, to submit okay, this grant. But our task here with the BOO, a task here with the BOO meeting was to get that feasibility study off the ground. So that's what we're focusing on. That's what Tim has asked us to focus on. Right. That's what the BOO would like to focus on. Right. Can we so if that's work the case. That, that's, we, it's a building project, Joyce, mm -hmm. which means it's, it's a very complicated. Feasibility study. Yes, but you still have to bid it a certain way because you're addressing a building. It's called yeah. design construction. Right. And so but we have the feasibility to study is a that. person going and looking and making a determination and figuring out what costs might be and reporting back to us, this is what the status is. This is what you have to do to bring it up to what you want. Space is either enough or not enough for your senior center it was what was it space it was safety it, that space person does not have to have a hammer right. or a nail and that person That's also doesn't have saying. to do a study to say structurally the 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 they uh, don't have the, to do a structural study if you've they, done one already yeah they well no i'm um, what i'm going to say is that they don't have to the first plan and for a year as long as i've known about it was the da was going to donate money to make the um the the fellowship hall a smaller version of a temporary space. Mm -hmm. And the sanctuary is going to be developed in a parallel track, either for use as a temporary uh, senior center, community center, or as a functional space for the town to use because we're gonna move on to a different plan. Mm -hmm. The feasibility study should focus on, is it is is it good for a temporary one in the fellowship hall? Is a larger one encompassing the whole building a feasible, more permanent thing, uh, five years, thing. 10 years? Um, and then parallel to that, what we're doing is having people come in to say what structural things need to be done to the, the sanctuary side of the building. Um, the building is, you know, we can we can separate it off and, and there will be no communication of air between the, the, the fellowship side and the, the sanctuary side. It seems that we need to just focus the fel uh, the the, um, the the feasibility study on. Is it big enough? Is it, is the fellowship hall big enough for a temporary space? Uh, can what what is the cost of fixing the the food service capabilities of that space? Um, and is there anything else in the surrounding area that's five five miles from here that could be used as an alternative to this plan? That's a feasibility study. The other stuff, in my estimation, is Deerfield's responsibility to look at the building and say is it structurally repairable, um, you know, and 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 develop a plan to do that. And, and come up with the yeah. grants writing. So if if we can decide tonight that, that the boo is not in favor of writing a letter of support to this, we can go about our plans for this other stuff. A and tip, do it. The building, 6,556 square feet. Needs to be the whole thing. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, uh, the whole building, 6,555 right. square, mm -hmm. 56 square. Yeah, I, I, I guess I just want to be clear that I, I feel like this has to be the whole place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. Absolutely. I'm just saying that yeah. the that whole place, the, original is, plan. the whole place is not going to be fixed in 11 months. No, no. But, but one part yeah. of it might be fixed in 11 months and it might be adequate for a bridge gap. Maybe it wouldn't be. Maybe uh, we don't want yeah. people in there at all if we're going to be fixing the rest of the building. But mm. Um, well, that, 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 Tim, that could be part of your, your assessment also. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, so, so Carolyn's okay. taking notes here. Yep. Right. Uh, uh, Joyce, Joyce had three things. The scope would include, is it, you know, safe? Mm -hmm. And then the cost of making it safe. Mm -hmm. And then space, is it adequate for what um, our programs are? Mm -hmm. And then also, I think it's important to include programs in the future. Mm -hmm. Because right. there is a growth in our programs, um, and then other options. So the scope of work is basically yeah. pretty clear. Three things, it, and co costs associated with those first two. Right. Yes. Right. right. She's got yes. that down. I got yep. the cost. And yep. also, I, I would bet we should also look at. But we should also go back to the study that we had commissioned for our senior yes. center and enroll that study. That that is like our primer. That mm -hmm. and, and then we can. We can address those issues to that location yeah. and say, all right, these are kind of programs that we're looking at. Because it talks about, it talks about exactly. programs and rule of programs that are in this study. Can this space? Will they? Yeah. Can they, that's, can they occur? That's is the part space of adequate? The space. Yeah, it's part of is the space adequate using the data mm -hmm. we have right. already right. to because look into the future for the current programs, but also the perspective. Right. Once yeah, yeah, in the that, next couple of years. Yeah, because we went through that thing, and, and and that should be kind of like the base line. That, that that's kind of the that mm -hmm. in your structural integrity that you had were kind are kind of the, to me the base, mm -hmm. and then everything else is, is I I can support that because we're not making a commitment to one building or another. Right. But but it, it's saying and and really it's the town of Deerfield that's going to. I mean, if we come down to it and it doesn't meet the requirements for what we need for our seniors, then then we we all say, okay, we got to move on. But right. if it does, it's, it's like, okay, now let's now we have to look at it more closely to the inner right. home of our seniors. So so does everyone? I mean, I, I'm as a select board, I'm 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 fine with that. How about my I mean, you? My only concern is, what are we doing with a hundred thousand? Do we, well, it's right. not ours. Which one is that? That's yours. Yeah, no. we're gonna. It was it's not a, all it's, of us. It's it's not a boo decision. If it's tied to that building, it's, it's got to no. be used on that building. Yeah. And well, so it, the intention I, was for the seniors. Thousand is. Well, we are seniors. Who's seniors? Hello. I'm not senior. <laughs> not yet. A couple more years. <laughs> and, and, and again, and, and again, that's why sometimes we have to. We we may want to talk about what we're going to do in the future as a group right about how we do things mm -hmm. but, but i think Joyce is right some some of the intent if you're kind of saying the same thing yeah. that this is part of it is a dear question and the part is the boo right and, and if you're saying okay do our is the boo okay with writing the letter say yeah look at this can mm -hmm. can it match up to our goals that were set forward in in our plan a few years ago i have no problem with that that's Okay. That that could we at some point we have to either of uh, we we have to know what that can that can that building meet our requirements that was laid out in the right study. in that study. Okay. Okay. So, so what, I, what I've got here, let's see if this matches yours, Carolyn. I've got scope of work with three things. My One is uh, safety, uh, specifically mold and asbestos. Knowing that some of the asbestos work is already may that may well actually be all done. And including the cost of complying, uh, I'd say complying, but co the cost of making the place mold free mm -hmm. or as close as uh, one. Can well, be, I right? I just think it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to just say mold free. I would just want to say environmentally safe, right? Because but, but, well, specifically I mean, that being a yeah. big issue. And if there's if those are the two big ones, but mm -hmm. yes, of course there's others. Okay. Second was space. Will it meet our needs and the cost of making it? Uh, meet our needs, mm -hmm. and then third, will it meet our future needs? And here I wrote fold in the survey data about our desired programming mm -hmm. um, for the future. Right, and then and other options, which is the uh, third one. 
Oh, you mean are there other options, options in a five right. year in it, a five mile just, radius? Just, I mean to look at. Oh, I mean, okay. So I, I I sort of separated out the future needs from current needs, but that's yeah. okay. No, that's good. Um, and are there other options of spaces? Other options. I mean, we for we all from the feasibility study though for could we use that building? It seems like that fourth one isn't really right. That's that's more what the, the boo has to figure down out. the road. It, uh, down the road, or you know, depending on the I mean, if they come if, back and say for this very reasonable price. Right. We can make that building do everything we want to do and everything that's mentioned in this survey, mm -hmm. then Great. that's you that's know, that's very different from coming back and saying you're never gonna get the mold out of that building. Right. Oh yes. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. So, so, because I don't know what the result of the feasibility study is gonna be. I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. I, I want the, the data, I want the results of that study. Okay. So that's okay. that I, I think we, we can't make good decisions without data. And I was hoping that this would actually be a place where we could talk about the initial results of a, of a feasibility study, but that yeah. clearly isn't the case. No, we're can, too overwhelmed. Can Casey, can you just forward any of that stuff? Yeah, like, I thought I up. Okay. Okay. Next. If you and, if you could nail it down and make sure that Joyce has it, that would be great. Well, I'll do the stuff that that Julie got to the Okay. I was going to say once once again, you know, the question yeah. still hasn't been answered, so I don't think the feasibility study will be finished by June 2nd, okay? Right. That's just not mm -hmm. more than likely right. not going to happen. So the question is, should I change direction on the grant? I mean, it doesn't mean to say that hopefully we get the money for this and then it could still be a potential senior center. But I need to know that, and I need to know whether and if you if you will not write a letter of support, then I've got to change tact because I can't. And, and you need that it. information tonight. And I've known this no, for thirty June minutes. No, 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 June first, June second. So second. No, I need it before that. She well, needs yeah. to know before yeah. that. Is she has the to application to deadline. Yeah, yeah. 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 see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because there, yeah. Oh, okay. I would have appreciated knowing that before I walked into this meeting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were going to ask us for a letter for some other grant until mm -hmm. partway through this meeting. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what mm -hmm. to right. say. That's I don't fine. know whether to advise you to that change tack or not. What was the last one we wrote? That was for the feasibility study. Feasibility. That was just to do the feasibility yeah. study. This Originally, we asked for two hundred thousand dollars, but it was a regionalization grant. We're already regionalized, therefore they couldn't, in good conscience, give us that. Mm -hmm. But they were able; we were able to get the seventy-five thousand dollars to see whether it would work as a transitional senior center, and also what the senior needs are. And we already had that study from I think it was UMass, mm -hmm. so we do have that. So can we can we um, ask the question? Is FERCOG a good person group to uh, approach to do the RFP for this feasibility study, so we can? You know, yeah, maybe get if, some movement on that. And, Andrea has the time, yeah. Um, and they're going to get money too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they'll do it. Getting money. Yeah, and that way that we know that we have the seventy-five thousand available for the feasibility study, so we can mm -hmm. pay them whatever fee they charge for their RFP services and get the feasibility study. If if you guys are comfortable with that, yeah, yeah, that's well, moving and forward. And I'll take what I the the notes I made here. I'll I can email them to Casey and to, that'd be perfect. Uh, Great. To, I've got your. I don't know I, if I have I, Tim's email, but I'll. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll make sure. send it Casey gets it. She can disseminate it. Yeah. And, and and you said that have you had people look at it about the environmental yeah. the health and it's in and it's in there, right? I think I sent that out a few months ago. We'll, we'll find it. it. I'm so, so, uh, and, and I, I don't know if I had, and again, I, I work in the, the business sort of, mm -hmm. so I know, know what can be done. I'm not, I'm not as hesitant because I've seen some pretty bad stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that I think that's one of the things Joyce is is asking is is can it be can right. it actually ever be? And right. if that's in the report, I think that helps. <laughs> to me. The, the, all the other questions that are going to be asked are going to be asked in the next phase. Mm -hmm. But phase one, one A is feasibility. Can, can it be helped? Yeah. Yep. And absolutely. People get 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 afraid when they hear mold, asbestos, mm -hmm. and yeah. Whatever. 
yeah. and right. they get afraid. And, and I can tell you, and I, I know just from my experience, walking through the building, we walk through the mm -hmm. building, first thing is I take, I would take all those books out yep. of there, yeah. all the cushions out of there. Yep. I would have gone down to the basement and I would board it up all the windows that allow moisture in. Mm -hmm. Any, anything that a bug can eat, I would strip it out yeah. of there. But, okay. I, but, I'd like, but someday there's going to be another cushion in that building if there's a senior center. Mm -hmm. There's going to be another thing that could carry mold if the building is just going to have mm -hmm. yeah I mean, that's uh, where we need the expert yep to be able to say yeah of course get all the mold that's in there out of there but how do you make it so it doesn't come back right. because i don't think we can say great seniors no cushions yeah right no, no no yeah no absolutely i mean no, i think and that's that's it just has right. to be okay so, so it, it's not continuing to talk about I, that we i know tom's got another i've got a thing of seven i talk myself yeah we'll let you run so it sounds like um we we have a scope of work at least worked out yeah we have another meeting next week i would if you, i got some materials in advance to look over maybe it could be well, a discussion for, on our yeah uh at, at our meeting that'd be great uh to and talk then, about in in what in what sense can we support this grant? Because Perfect. of course I want to support the grant, but yeah, I sort of don't want to do it at gunpoint. I know that's a little hyperbolic, <laughs> but no, I uh, understand. You know, yeah. Walk in the room and it's like, well, give me a letter. And I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Part, I, of it, I don't get part of it, Joyce, is just that's why we're having this meeting. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of get on one page. Uh, Denise is volunteering to write the grant. Mm -hmm. And and when and the grant writes. And then <laughs> well, and then Tim Tim has we been volunteer helping a lot of people. And, and yep. and so it's, yeah, oh, I know. Trying it's to get lot everybody to, to get together. Oh, yeah, and yeah. to get the to get the grant, you have to pay attention to all the details. Yes, and, and, yes, and yes. you have so to that, get, and gather the support. So I, I I completely get that. That's a great plan. Let's get whatever environmental stuff over to Joyce, so she has a couple of days or time right. to look and, at it. And, 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 and then maybe should come around. To there's the, a sample letter or two yeah, that yeah. you have. Send those we'll too. Send that too. Yeah. Um, in an email. Like, like, what exactly are you asking us to support? Perfect. And then and you could edit it the way you feel comfortable can, and send yeah, it back. Yeah, we can work on that at our next meeting. That's wonderful. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Yeah. Motion Thanks, to adjourn. Tom. Second. Thank you. All, all, those, all those in favor. Thank you. Thank Listen. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Oh, you're we welcome. Just make sure it's that it really happens. a pleasure. Yep. And that yep. was what it is: it's communication. I do. Bye. Don't don't lose the phone. I'm, I'm gonna miss. We'll lose that phone, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Cool. Um, so, uh, moving on, our next. Um, we're running a little late. Sorry about that. Our next uh, appearance is. Uh, uh, Christopher Curtis for the MVP grant application certification of match and approval letter of support. How are you tonight? I'm great. How good. Are you? Thanks for your patience. How are you? No, good. no problem. I'm good. Okay. Thanks so for, uh, taking this up. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, we're um, seeking your approval uh, tonight to submit two different grants to the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. One is a MVP action grant, and the second one is called an MVP 2.0 planning grant. One is very complex and one is very simple. Um, so I want to talk about the action grant first. We're um, titling this project uh, Deerfield Green Infrastructure. These are projects that grew out of the work of our MVP uh, Climate Resiliency Core Group that um, include two of the select board on it. And um, there are four parts to this project. The overall goal for the project is, like many of our MVP grants, to reduce flooding and stormwater impacts to the town. That's sort of the big issue for climate. Um, and this is an online application, so there's lots of different pieces to it. I've tried to provide you with some of the key pieces so that you could see some of it. Um, there's about 10 other oh, components sure. that go into the package as well. So the four main components of the grant are historic deer field. Uh, we're going to be putting in a tree box filter on Old Main Street near the Deerfield Inn. Um, that's a major area of flooding concern for historic deer field, and uh, they are actively supporting this. Um, yes. I thought it was right across the street from the brick church as the as it comes down from the head head's house, well, right? 
again, this is a very complicated project, but there are four alternate locations for the tree box filter. Oh, okay. We've spent some time talking to John Davis and um, the archaeologist and so forth, and a couple of places got eliminated. Um, so the preferred location is sort of just north of the Deerfield Inn. Um, where there is a, a right of way area along the road mm -hmm. with space. The al second alternative is the one you're talking about. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm more excited about the second alternative is because that area by the visitor center is our hot spot for West Nile disease. For some reason, that's a, uh, a reservoir in there. And um, We've been disease free for the last three years. Um, Deerfield Academy has been lava siding in there, but um, trying to capture runoff from our streets so it doesn't go into that area is critical in my mind. So I, if we can get a tree box in that spot, that's more for me, that has a higher public health Im Im impact than. Um, I, I realize Sorry, that the, are you talking about um, just so I'm clear, um, north or south of the visitor center? North, well, south of the visitor center. So mm -hmm. as you okay. come down the hill, there's a lot of water. I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So originally in this grant, we had a rain garden proposed yes. for that site. I know. Unfortunately, there were some problems with um, the permitting process with that, and we had to drop that out of the project. So we're going to go back. I've got a meeting set up with John Davis. We're going to go back and look at at alternate sites, and we'll we'll get something done there eventually. It won't be this grant. But... I know. I, I and I, I'm just I'm just want to make sure that that we don't lose sight of the a public health aspect of. I mean, yeah. dealing with the stormwater and flooding is critical. There's no question, and you want the stormwater filtrated when it comes off the street anyway, but. If we can capture it, um, because from a public health point of view, that's only get, the, these frequent events are only going to get worse. So, sorry, Chris. I, oh, I hear you. So, in the interest of getting through this whole thing, can you make a presentation and then we can ask questions at the yeah. end? Sure. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, the I second piece. Being chair. Sorry. To <laughs> the... I just want to go home tonight. <laughs> Second piece to the scope is at Deerfield Elementary School, um, where we will be putting in a green entryway that's composed of two new rain gardens and some stormwater uh, related landscaping work that will complement the uh, redo of the paved section of the entryway that's going to be paid for separately, not, not by this grant. And uh, our partners there, the Frontier, Frontier Regional School District and Elementary School, they're very supportive and also providing some match. Um, the third piece is the Leary Lot Green Parking Lot. Um, as you know, um, the town is, is um, moving ahead with the project there. We will be, um, in this grant, adding to that um, some green components, two rain gardens, two tree box filters, a bioswale. Um, and a sort of pocket park slash picnic area. Um, and then the fourth piece is community engagement, which is a required component of the grant. And we're going to be engaging students at Deerfield Elementary School with uh, climate curriculum involvement in planting and maintaining the rain gardens, um, helping to design a sign for it, for example. We're also going to be um, for the Leary lot, engaging the town center community, the businesses and residents there in two public forums, which hopefully the select board will be sponsoring. Yes, um, uh, we want to make that commitment. We will engage them in, you know, looking at the design plans and incorporating comments and suggestions. So, um, Quick summary of you know sort of the partners and and the support for this. We have letters of support and commitments of support from Deerfield uh, Energy Committee and Planning Board, from Historic Deerfield, from Frontier um, Regional and Union Thirty Eight School District, from six town businesses: Leo's Table, Seas Lux Market, Gianni Figs Restaurant, Berkshire Brewing Company, Hampshire Lumber, Bueno Isano Restaurant, 
couple of those are providing cash uh, donations to support the project as well. And from Deerfield for Responsible Development. Um, the budget for the project, uh, total project budget is $336,000 and change. The match is um, $98,000. I'm rounding here. Um, and I guess the good news about the match is that um, we have a contribution from Frontier of $30,000. Um, and we can creatively use, I believe, um, funding from your Leary Lot ARPA funding because it's you're paying for the design of the Leary Lot out of that, as I understand it, to cover $25,000 out of the match, $1,000 in business contributions. So that leaves the town with um, a $36,000 match. Um, I think that's a pretty, it's a pretty good deal to get a three hundred thirty-six dollar project, three hundred thirty-six thousand dollar project for a thirty-six thousand dollar match. So, um, you know, I was kind of happy with how that sorted out. Um, there's also an in-kind match um, involved of some um, staff time, not a lot. Um, so that is the the summary of the budget, I sent you along a more detailed version of the budget, which is in an Excel spreadsheet, and it has all of the different components to it. Um, I guess I want to just mention a couple of notes here. Um, this is an incredibly complex grant application, and I've only had a couple of weeks to work on it. Um, the RFP for this was 90 pages long. And our application is going to be a, a lot of pages when we finally get done with it. So I, I had estimated originally on my contract to do this in 44 hours. I'm well over 100 hours at this point in um, working on this. So I'm doing the rest of it pro bono, just so you know that. I also want to mention that I've worked extensively with um, the engineers that um, designed these projects, EBI, and they have put in a very large number of pro bono hours as well on this project and are doing construction specs for us at this point um, to be submitted with the grant. Um, we also got a lot of help from um, Lori Busada. I want to yes. recognize her. She reached out to our businesses and helped collect um, support from them. Chris Nolan helped a lot with this grant, and Berkshire Design um, also helped um, with some of the cost estimating. And that's, I guess, one of the caveats that I want to mention. Um, the budget for the Leary lot that you see in this project is um, was provided mainly by Berkshire Design's estimates, and they have not yet begun the design of, of that project. So those numbers are are their best estimates at this point. Um, so my biggest question is like what we're building in the Leary lot and where, and have we looked at that at all yet? Is there any schematic drawings of like w where rain gardens are going to be and what they're going to look like or anything like that? Cause there's not a ton of space there. Yeah. We had had hoped that Berkshire design would be done with their design at the time this grant right started and um they haven't even begun yet i just so we're working with what we've got um there is a schematic that was done by ty and bond that you may yeah. have seen and you know it shows that there is space on along the sort of the sides of the parking area to do some of these features but i'm not sure at all what berkshire design will end up right with. i really wanted to get involved with that kind of design and see how we we're going to one, I just didn't want a straight shot for one. And then two, the whole idea is to have some parking, but also some green space that people can yeah. be in and not be sitting in a rain garden either. So, you know, there needs to be green space as well. Um, well, we're counting on that because the, the contributions from the businesses are for picnic tables. Right, exactly. Um, so we're hoping to have outdoor dining. That's what we need. This. That was the whole and 
point. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that, that's an assumption that we've all agreed on. I and then how do we how do we maintain? You know, I mean, you, I, I worry. Uh, so some of the things that worry me is like the side of the elementary school. You know, we just don't have staff to go in and clean all that out. It's a catch all for everything. So I'm worried. Like, how do we design something that is not a catch all for that or takes minimal clean out. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I'm concerned that we get ugly looking space, you know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. to capture water, but it really, yeah. um, it ends up making the whole project look not good. No, I don't think anybody wants that. Right. Um, but it's kind of I what think we have probably over there. The answer to your question is that there is an operation and maintenance plan that has to get developed as part of the grant. Uh, we will be looking at ways to involve the community in the maintenance of each of these sites. Mm. Um, the, the elementary school, we've got the students already committed to being involved with that. But for the ones at Leary Lot, I think getting the businesses involved in the town center uh, or maybe some group of folks that are interested in gardening to, mm -hmm. to help out and keep those things clean and, you know, to occasionally maybe do some watering and so forth. Right. Those are all things that we will be working on as part of this. And it's definitely, you know, I hear you. It's a, it's a concern. It's a huge, I would have yeah. too. You want it to look good at the yeah. end. Absolutely. Does Deerfield have a bid? Oh, what's that? You know, business improvement district or? No, they uh, did it one time yeah, way back. Business way association. Back. Yeah. Years ago. Came up with a beautiful plan for revitalizing downtown, but I know. never took off. That was, a, that was, that was more than 20 years ago. Cause that was the beginning yeah. of my. It's like 30. Yeah, yeah it was beginning of my term. Yep. They don't have um, a business association. No. Um, mm -hmm. um, Lori, Lori Busada was wonderful. She had reached out to the businesses and they're definitely, I mean, one of the reasons we're doing the outreach or, you know, I had committed to Chris that we would schedule outreach meetings is because I, I, I feel like you have, the businesses have really turned over for the most mm -hmm. part and, and we have new people like Leo's table and and so they want outside dining and um and I think once the parking comes in and they see how nice the space is and how it enhances their business that there will be a commitment from the down you know the businesses so I know Berkshire Brew uh one of the reasons we're you know I have been talking to Gary for three or four years on this since pandemic started um, is because he wants to do some kind of beer garden that is more permanent. Yeah, than not there. just in his the, parking lot. I'm not just in his parking lot. So the idea is to have some kind of flow um, that enhances his business. So obviously, they might make a commitment. So you know, to do some kind of and, and up. so my main concern is that we wind up doing this plan right. We get a grant, and then all of a sudden we're rushed to put in tree boxes all over town and we haven't really come up with a real large scale plan of what we really want to do so that's my biggest concern is that we oh, we go for this stuff we get it and then it's like rush to get it installed but we haven't really got a master plan on how everything looks and i feel like we're stuck with this thing because we went with it and we put the ninety thousand forward but yet so we stick a plant in here but we're our, a part of the plan in here but it doesn't really talk to the rest of the town and uh, well that's we're not part talking of this about putting tree boxes all over town first of all there, there what's are, that we're not talking about putting tree boxes no, all over when town we did right we were like oh my god we got to get these in or we're going to lose the grant and we oh you're talking about it, the previous grant the previous grant and i'm worried about this one like taking that same path where we were scrambling and like had to hang them, you know what I mean? Because we're like, because you the grant's got to be done. And well, you know, the good thing about this is the primary focus is on the Leary lot, right? I mean, we've got a tree box in Old Deerfield, but that's you know, that's um, and and you know, we may or may not, um, you know, I understand your concern about DES, mm -hmm. but but in terms of the Leary lot, I and mean, that's really the only community space that's not tied to uh, you know, that that is going to really open up the downtown right and that's going to be designed by berkshire design it's going to be part of the plan right and um you know t my only concern is that um 
Does Berkshire Design have its contract signed and delivered? Yes. Yes. It's in hand. Okay. In hand. So, We're waiting for council to do the signature as to form. Uh, we haven't heard back, but Chris sent it out the other day. Okay. So that, so in other words, they almost have their contract. Yeah. yeah. They almost have their contract. Okay. So they're going to start work soon. Um, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, also, that, also this is just point. so you know, this is a two fiscal year grant. Oh, good. So the Leary lot falls into the second fiscal year. So, so that, that gives us more time than you might have thought to, to get things done. So I'm going to throw my same issue into the mix. And it's just, it's a concern that both the accountant and I have. Um, we need to be very careful that we start spending this ARPA money. Otherwise, they could potentially claw it back. They're That's already our, talking about clawing infrastructure money back. So my right. concern was maybe we think, Chris, maybe we think about flipping that task. Um, because I know there's issues with DES, but you know, if they claw back the ARPA funds, Leary Lot doesn't get done. How soon could that happen? We're not well, sure. It's going to be a negotiation the right between the already, president and the Congress. The right has already put it in there. The good thing about ARPA is that the select board can spend it in a day. <laughs> right. We have yeah. enough things that no, we could we potentially have, we have buy. To, we have to post for 48 hours. Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> basically saying we have to do procurement for it too. There is, I'm, I don't think there's any scenario under which the money wouldn't be spent for the benefit of the town. Whether it's buying a bucket That's loader I'm or saying. I'm yeah. just saying that if it's for FY25, right, then if something happens in the next year, that could be a problem, Chris. When do we think I've that, just been cautious with people about when this. when do we think that we're actually going to build the Leary lot? That's a question I have I mean, for you. <laughs> my understanding, so, Carolyn, is your hope has been, yeah, my my understanding is we've been hoping to do that this year. And I've been pushing since I got elected to get the Leary lot to a position where we could actually do the land swap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, if, if Berkshire Design is just getting, almost getting its contract four months after we approve the contract, then one thing we need to commit to tonight is to speed up the process from when the board approves something and when the contracts get delivered. Because this is one of the major reasons why we're not further along with this project. So, but the issue is, is you have to outline your scope and we had to add to the scope. Shouldn't have and taken four was, months. I'm just saying it shouldn't have taken four months. But there were elements that came up after we started discussing this, like the EV chargers. That's an element that, of the contract. That, that's true. But I'm saying that going forward, forgetting what we've done already, going forward, we have to make a commitment to work administratively more rapidly than we're currently doing it. I think it's a valid thing that we need to work on. If well, we have to peel some other things off the plate, and we yeah, hopefully we our peel some other things. Off hopefully, the plate. our planning, economic development uh, grant writer is going to help with that because yeah. that person's going to take on a lot of the issues that have been problematic for us. Well, we've so two things. Um, Andrea Woods is happy to take the procurement on for this with Berkshire Design. They usually turn their stuff around fairly quickly. Um, I already had that conversation with her. Um, Chris has been doing a great job sort of marshalling, you know, the forces in terms of incorporating the EV chargers, mm -hmm. working with, uh, Rivermore Energy and, you know, coordinating with Eversource because we still have to build that in. Um, you have to, Eversource has to determine the cost for infrastructure mm -hmm. potential that they might give us for money, Chris. Um, but that has to be incorporated and that didn't come up until later in this game. Yeah. So Chris has so been what doing would, a lot. What would we have done if we had awarded the contract and signed a contract with Berkshire Design, and after the fact we decided to put in EV chargers, and EverSource was going to give us money? We'd have we would to have. We would have. We we would have done an adjustment to the contract, but right. but the actual preliminary design. This is actually an updating of an existing design. Yes. And so, I'm just saying that we could have been doing this work two or three months ago, and we would have had to make some adjustments, but we would have had a better idea of what we're getting ourselves into uh, than well, we do today. The land swap thing, how's that flying along? The purchase and sale agreement is in your signature okay, docs. Okay, good. We got it. We All got right. it this morning from Chip Farnham. So we just need you guys to sign it so we can turn it back around and send it to legal so mm -hmm. they can coordinate between the two legal okay. um, offices because there's specific things you have to mm -hmm. do with a closing. Well, that's good. I mean, we didn't know if that would actually happen, so yep. that's good. Nope. So um, so if this grant is awarded, 
the contracting period would start in September. Um, you could begin work as early as this fall. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, we can we can shift things around from one fiscal year to another within the grant. It's going to drive me a little crazy, but <laughs> we can still do that. When would they approve? Yeah. I'm sorry? When would they approve the grant? Like we put it in. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you won't find out until probably late August and okay. the contracting period in the fall. is mm -hmm. in September. Yeah, okay. So hypothetically, right. so we're not actually good. that far behind. Yeah. In yeah. terms of, of okay. the application process. And probably probably once the design is in process, there there can be some groundwork that could be done. Um, you know, we put out an RFP. I don't know. Uh, maybe well, we can get bid, maybe we can get bid, Kevin Kevin, you know, and the, the DPW to do some of the preliminary clearing of trees or brush or whatever's there um to, you know, help so that that when the, the RFP goes out, some of this work may have been done already. So do you want me to move this project into fiscal 24 then? Because it's in fiscal 25 we're, we're right doing now. this. Yes, we're moving forward with this. I just don't want us to be in a situation if they do all the infrastructure work for the EV chargers, that it impacts the, um, the request around the paving because you want to stack how that happens so it's a progression so you don't have to go back and fix something. That was my thought when I read it. Um, that's the only reason I bring that up, Chris, is because if if the intent and we were to get if the intent of the grant application is to get some money towards that permeable pavement stuff, it if if no. if we do it in such a way that it's the EV charging stuff's already gone in, then that could impact how we do that that paving stuff. That's all I'm concerned about. I don't want to do it fast afterwards. So, so this, and I'm not sure how that this works. just to be clear, this doesn't include the permeable okay. pavement anymore. Well, you that's, mentioned the parking lot. So yeah. that's why I was. Yeah, the parking lot there. gets paid for separately. This just gets kind of added in into the green space. Yeah. Yeah. This is all um, peripheral and, and, and um, tree box. Yeah. So, just so I understand. It would be nice to do it all, all at the same time. Oh, yeah. And if you're going to do the parking lot, yeah. say in the fall or even in the spring of next year, Right. And I should move this into the, yes, the current that, fiscal year. Yeah, which sure. Which would actually be better for the grant. Yes. As, yeah. as much as it's a lot of work to do it. But I it can, should be. I yeah. Shift it. Because we want to get rolling well, in that. We're moving forward on it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we have okay. the ability. That's, that's helpful for me to, to understand okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. So there are three approvals needed for grant number one. One is the match certification, you need know, approval and signature. I need approval to submit the grant, which happens tomorrow, um, and a letter of support from the select board. I think I and have that. Yes, it should be in the thing. I have um, the match statement. And do we have, have we put money in the budget for this? So, this is a question. Oh, question. how are we paying for that? Right, that's oh, what I'm, you didn't okay. allocate any money in the FY24 budget for this. Yeah, so let's figure that out first. Because um, none of that was communicated. So, Brenda, that was first Brenda's first question with me when I showed her the grant application. Well, but that's not true because we were going to do always do the Leary lot. But that wasn't in our budget, the budget budget, the omnibus budget. Um, if so it's, all of this the is first time I, I heard that our funds. funds would be used was tonight, Carol. Well, no, I mean, Casey, we've always, we as a select board have already voted our ARPA money for you the Leary. voted Act. a certain amount. Right. You voted up to 500 right now. I just need to be sure before you sign that document, um, Brenda wants to be sure she knows what that, where that money's coming from. Well, this is to the development of Leary Law. So, so what about the rest of it? Because we have to certify to, and, to match and for we, the other activities. We have already, we voted the match for DES at town meeting. Right, July 1st thing. So right. yep. the other element, the, I don't remember what task it is, but it's a little over, it's like 18,000. I forget which, I wanna say it's like task one or something. Um, so we that have money, was that, where was the match coming for that? Well, the, what's important is where the total match comes from. So the $25,000 in ARPA money is money that you're already spending for Berkshire design. We're just, we're, we're basically capturing. So that's what you're, that's what you're capturing. We're okay, capturing, that's what I right. needed to so know. So it sort of saves the town $25,000 that they otherwise would have, I'm 
yeah, twenty five thousand dollars that they otherwise would have had to, you know, come up with. So the thirty six thousand one seventy five is the the amount of cash that that you need to 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 do this project. Mm -hmm. Which which project? The so whole project. The whole thing. So project. Yes, tree box. Tree box. In Old Deerfield, we need eighteen thousand for mm -hmm. roughly nineteen thousand, and that. But don't don't look at the detailed budget because really, what you're just certifying is the. Is yeah, the but we need to figure out where the money's coming from. Right, we need to have that settled. If you're going to ask yeah. them to certify, we need to have the, understand where the money. I can't just oh, like okay. pick a number. But if you if you start delving into the individual matches for the individual projects, it's going to be make it more complicated than it needs to be. I think. Well. So let me ask you a question. Basically, what you're saying, Chris, is that um, money that's not already been allocated, like DES and um, the Leary lot match, because it's included in spending. Overall, all these projects, we we have thirty six thousand that we haven't identified a way to pay for, and Correct. is some of that in matching, or is it not in matching? It's all it's all the cash match that's required to do right. all four okay, so of it's, these projects. It's not in kind match. Correct. No. And thirty-six thousand one hundred seventy-five dollars and eighty-five cents to be specific. And, and so that's the amount of money we have to figure out how we can pay for. It. That's right. Right. So that's the question. That's so, well, that's question. that's what I mean. So you have eighteen thousand in in cash match at the historic Deerfield that's project. It. Then there's um, And, and oh, I see what you mean. And then there's the reporting. So it's like 19,000 total for that whole upper item. That's right. And then there's another 37,000 of cash match that's needed for the school, but we've already voted some of that money, right? We voted some money aside for the doing the front of that area, correct? The capital request. Right? Yes. So, oh, yeah. So then, um, where are you the, coming up with the 18,000? Well, I'm looking at this sheet right here. It says task one, total cost, 18,000 cash match. But that's for the rain garden and tree filter. We're not right. in the rain garden anymore. So, um, the, the tree box, how much is the tree box now, Chris? If the you take out the cash box? match for historic. Deerfield specifically, the new numbers, which I, I'm sorry, I only sent them to you earlier today. I've been, you know, really no, crunched fine. on this. Yep. Um, was 19,172 and yeah. 25 cents. That's here. The amount for Deerfield Elementary School is 37, 38,179. And keep in mind, out of that amount, um, 30,000 is coming from Frontier. Um, the amount for the Leary lot is 33571 And again, keep in mind that 25000 of that amount is coming from the ARPA money that you're already spending. Right. You've already decided on. Yep. And then there's just a $1,000, $1,253 in the last task. Um, so, so what we're trying to figure out is where the twenty thousand dollars is going to come from, since the others seems to be covered, roughly. Um, you need to figure out where thirty six thousand one seventy five is coming. From. Yeah. So we don't have a line item for that. We don't. Brenda and I have already talked about it. There's <clears> one <throat> source that we can use. Um, MVP. We have an MVP fund that still has money in it, so that'll cover a portion of it. And did did we 18, did we fund any MVP last for 2024 like we did in 2023? No. Well, that was a mistake. Well, but at the time we were doing the budget, this wasn't on a on the radar screen. So, I mean. so I just heard we have 36 to come up with. We have 18,000 18, left over, so that's 18,000 basically left. Um, we have a. I'm just. I'm just talking here. I'm not suggesting this is what we should do, but we have. What do we have to do? Make we have to commit that we will pay for this, right? So, um, if the Leary lot, we don't. We still don't even know what that's going to cost. No, we still don't. But we have. Um, I don't know. In excess of. 
Okay. You could commit some funds out of ARPA. That was Brenda's suggestion. Right. We could commit them. And then in the fall, once we get free cash certified, we may determine that we don't want to spend ARPA if on. Yeah. So it's not like between now and when we get this contract award, if we get it, <laughs> um, we can't solve that problem. Right. We know we can come up with $18,000. That's right. You do have a funding source that would cover all of it. So yeah. two funding sources. So that was my concern before they signed something. You know, everybody needs to acknowledge that you're certifying that you will come up with the money. Chris, yeah. Chris, I just have a question on the money mm -hmm. for the. If this is, it says subtask 1.1 construction of rain garden and tree box filter. And what? I, I don't feel like the tree box filter is $53,125 worth of project. I think the numbers no. are incorrect. No, that's the right number. That is for one tree box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would we do I that? Know. Makes no sense. Well, the reason that it's so high is that there's a 30% contingency fee, uh, amount put into the budget because this um, the construction costs for everything are going up so fast that we felt like that was necessary to put in. It may be that the the total budget that we got from the contractors for the tree box was 35000 So the 30% con contingency bumps that up significantly so we may end up not spending like smart way of anywhere money. near that amount of money um but that's you know i mean you have to that's have the reason somewhat of a straight face test to talk to the residents about spending that kind of money on a tree box filter i mean it's just it's not fiscally responsible as much as you want to do things is there another way to make differences that are not that kind of money for one tree box filter. It just you know, mm. everything is so expensive and to yeah but to be doing this stuff so it doesn't make sense. Let's make sure we we're saying what we're actually saying. Um this tree box filter in actual Deerfield match is what? Nineteen thousand dollars. Okay. So our cost is nineteen thousand dollars. Eighteen seven. Right. Yeah. And is historic Deerfield giving any money toward this? No. Okay. So it's not fifty three thousand that we're worried about. It's what is it going to cost us to do it? And I can still agree with you, Trevor, that you have to ask yourself: Is nineteen thousand worth? It? Mm -hmm. You know. So. Um, well, and that's with, I mean. With a thirty percent contingency built in, but, but even still, um, you know, you drop it down to thirty-five, and it's still eleven or twelve. Mm -hmm. um, right. But that's probably um, the more realistic. But that's, standard. I think, why you were saying to think about. We have to figure out where the thirty-six thousand that we don't already have allocated to this total project is going to come from. Mm -hmm. Because if you start looking about individual things, then that really what we're talking about is. Um, you know, what is the totality of this project as we understand it to be today is 36,000. An individual piece of it might be more or less, you know. May, so anyway, um, I'm happy to do whatever anyone else. Well, and just, you know, where's I am. And, you know, we don't, you know, I remember being in old Deerfield <laughs> during rainstorms and, and even just moderate rainstorms, it floods because you know, the leaves get into the drainage system and there's no place for the water to flow to. And uh, there's there no, no water place. Yes. Yeah, there's no DPW um, can't dedicate people to go down there and you know, wait for the place to flood. Um, so, I mean, either it makes sense or it doesn't. How much work would it be to to not do this tree box in this application? I mean, if we were to remove this, you know, what would that mean in terms of all the work that you've done already and the work that you'd have to do to take it out? Ah, that's a hard question to answer. Um, I was hoping to submit this application tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, no, that's why I'm, I'm saying we so need to make a decision tonight because it has to happen that. tonight. But The problem is we have to deal with flooding and it costs money. And do I want to spend this much money on a tree box? But or 127,000 on the front of the elementary school. I know, but 
we have to deal with water and water the water is not going to go away mm -hmm. the water table is increasing and this is just the cost of green infrastructure small roof at the front of that building i know over the entrance way I and you're going to spend one hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. i know it's not all of our money but it is all of our money it's our tax money mm -hmm. i know but this is a cost of green stuff kevin has his hand up he does go yes. ahead kevin all right. Um, it, if, I'm going to, if I could just kind of break it down in a couple of different places, the old Deerfield thing, um, uh, whatever you're going to do with the tree box is, is, is on you, but what more, what I think money should be spent on would be actually trying to deal with the drainage because the problem, okay, if you've got an area that's flooding, why is it flooding? The water's got no place to go. So you got to give the place the water to go to, and, and, and then at least that way you've got some place to send it, you know, because when you look at all of that drainage goes in behind the old Deerfield, the, the end. And then from there, it, it's a little dinky pipe that comes out that kind of bleeds out into a, in a little area. And it really doesn't make its way to the river as it should in proper draining. Very similar to like we did over by the candy kitchen. You go ahead and you increase your, your drainage to what it should be, or I should say restore your drainage the way it should be. And then that's going to take care of a lot of your problems. Now, can you go ahead and utilize a tree box to go ahead and, and take away some of your contaminants and things like that before it goes into that system? Certainly, you know, I understand that. The other part I'm a little concerned about is, is maybe there's a different design when we talk with EBI um, that, I mean, when you think about it, we've got 110 gallons worth of water that has to fill the box before it goes into the filter. And, and I know that, you know, I'm responsible going around and I do go ahead and I put the tabs in all of our drains on, um, but we're, we're, we're making a, a mosquito habitat, even though we're maintaining it. Um, but again, with old Deerfield, you know, however you want to go with, with the tree boxes or whatever, that's obviously completely on you, but I would seriously think my, my major thing would be to figure out how to get rid of the water first, because otherwise all you're taking it is you're, you're bringing it in. It's going to go into the tree box. The tree box is only going to be able to accept so much. Once it does, it's going to overflow. It's going to go into the in, in, into the overflow drain, which goes into standard drainage, and then it's got no place to go to, and that's where your backup is. So, again, personal opinion, take it for whatever it's worth. We should seriously think about where the water goes to relieve that pressure, and that will give us some breathing room. Are there other things that still need to be put in? Certainly, you know. Um, if you know, if you want to do the rain garden, if you want to do the other, the other things, once again, that that's on your end. <clears throat> um, the other part that really concerns me about DES, uh, I, 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 I mirror Trevor heartily. I mean, I'm looking at the breakdown, um, you know, nursery price for a tree, for a river birch is $340, but the markup is 1,020. That's a $680 profit they're making per, per, per plant. Um, 80, you know, almost $49,000 in plants, you know, and, and again, that's just me speaking, um, the Leary lot, again, you know, uh, I'm not sure, you know, if you needed to, uh, you can take the extra $36,000 out of our, again, you know, that, that's basically what the money's there for. You can utilize that again, just another, another thought. Um, so th those are my thoughts on that. The only question I've got real kind of real quick for Chris is what is expected from DPW on 1.3, 1.5, 2.4, and 2.5? Um, just that way I'm aware of, of what my responsibilities are going to be for this, especially if this is going to be signed tonight. Um, those are your participation in the bidding process okay. for these elements, which you would normally do. Yep. And also, um, you know, just participating on site with the contractor to um, give your input on the construction when when that starts happening. All right, copy. Excellent. Okay. Like I said, I, I just wasn't really sure to be honest with you. When you, you know, come, Kevin, I when... just I just got this document like at four o'clock this afternoon. I understand. So I I just breezed through it just now because that I missed I got missed out on the um, email loop on this one. So I Kevin, I didn't... when you come to our meetings, um, yeah. your hours are counted. Okay, no, that that's great. I, I'm just trying to get an idea. You know, I just saw you know DPW um, um, match. You know, and I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what's respond what I'm responsible for. That's all. Yeah, makes sense. 
Um, but that, other than that, um, you know, is you guys figure out your funding source and you do it your others. But again, my old Deerfield thing is, is, is you need to take care of where the water goes to. If the water's got no place to go, you're going to have flooding. I, I don't care what you put in there, rain garden, tree box. The only thing you can bring in there is a sky lift and suck it out of there. Um, other than that, you're going to have flooding. Um, it's, it's just... So one question I have is on the DES, we allocated money to do the front of that paving. Right. Is this on top of that? Like, are we going to have enough money to do the paving work? Uh, this is all green infrastructure that's surrounding that. It's not also the... That was part of our the cash that we voted at town meeting goes towards this. But does it, is there enough? 80,000 is for paving only. Right. My understanding was 80,000 was paving only is what I saw for a bid. Carolyn, you, you explained this at a previous meeting. My understanding was that there was like, um, this, this was going to be viewed as a project. So some of this is going to be MVP grant money that we get. Um, and then some of the money we're going to spend on, um, I don't know, hard infra infrastructure or engineering or whatever is going to be our match. So I don't know if you can explain that to us. Well, we were we were going to use um well we wanted to use the asphalt that is decorative asphalt right we were hoping to do that as part of the but that design that, that, that is any of this no, that's a, no. that's a completely separate oh, project uh, right. now that's from totally separate we're voting the hopefully the um part of the the money that we voted at town meeting would be our match towards hopefully decorative but the money that we voted is not including this money. So what I'm saying is the money we voted at town meeting is to do that work. But then right. it's on all this energy, all this green infrastructure is on top of that work. Correct. So when you apply for a grant and you have a match, the green infrastructure stuff, let's let's say it's a um an easy number to do, eighty thousand dollars. Um 25% 25, 25 of that is the match that the town is responsible for. So that's 20,000. Mm -hmm. 60,000 is actual grant money. So um, that's why I think it's it's more logical as Chris proposed that you look at, we have a $36,000 budget gap as the current application is written. And we have $18,000 in unspent money for in the MVP system. So we're talking about an $18,000 gap for the, all of this, whether that's the money right. is spent at DES or Old Deerfield or in Leary Lot, that's really the thing we have to guarantee spending. However, if he's assuming that this 35000 or whatever is coming out of the money we voted at town no. meeting already, no, that's no. Not, not making perfect. that assumption. Okay. I right. want to make sure that that money was for paving. That's a separate project. A separate thing one. altogether. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm in favor of any sh shortfall to be paid for ARPA because these are three projects that are, I feel is really worth supporting. Certainly in the Leary lot being the, the lead one on that. Mm -hmm. um, so. And I've already voted in favor of the Leary lot, number one. So as the one number one thing that we're moving forward on immediately. Yeah, I support that. So. If we're looking for eighteen thousand dollars, this is better spent from our ARPA money than anything else because we're going to get the Leary lot done. We're going to make the the entrance to the DES um, entrance attractive for the next twenty years because hopefully this. And I want us to be sure, Kevin, if you're hearing this, um, that we use decorative asphalt so it's just not black sinkhole awful looking stuff. And we have to repair that. It's a safety issue. So let's let's move ahead and and vote this. Uh, that would be my motion. So I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Deborah McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um. So, Casey, if you are worried about this, it's going to be through ARPA funds. That's fine. That's what Brenda and I thought you should probably do. Mm -hmm. um, 
just because that mm -hmm. makes more sense. It'll get done faster. Well, um, and, and, I hopefully, do and hopefully the 30% contribution will not be used, you know, um, buffer is, will be, will come in less. One can hope. I know. Um, I do have two questions, Trevor. So one thing was, Chris, will you be working with Jeff Squire on outreach? Because that actually was something we added to his contract. The board requested that. So it's in his contract it's too. Oh, good. Um, so that, I just want to make great. sure, because Chris reminded, Chris and I were talking about it, my Chris, and I were talking about it today. Um, that was one of the things that changed in the scope um, for his contract. And the other thing was, is in the application, the places where we're going to need engineering consulting, um, I really don't think we should be naming a particular engineer right. because that's something that the decision will get made later on, probably by the select board um, as the contract authority. Um, we, so we, I think we, maybe we took, that we took that out of the uh, we took that out of it okay. this afternoon. Um, and there was one thing I just wanted to say. Hurricane Irene was in 2011. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Hurricane Irene was in 2011. <laughs> what did we write? No, I remember that distinctly. Caroline and yeah. I were on the phone all day that oh, day. Hurricane Irene. Hurricane what, Irene. What does it say? It says 2010. Oh. So I had written it down, but I didn't get a chance to give it to okay. you. So. <laughs> we could chase that. It's just that little thing. I was like, oh, we should correct. Okay. Well, and that, then um, I also will make a motion to um, have the letter of support. Support the letter of support. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Do um, you have another item that you're? Yes. On? There was three things on this grant: letter of support, match certification, and just submittal of the grant approval to oh, do that. Correct. Make um, a motion to submit the grant. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Um. And so you're going to change the the Leary lot to this so that we can do that yes. immediately. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. I just yep. want to make sure because because we are moving ahead with that, Chris. Yes. I whether, would do that. Whether we get this grant or not. Those two documents I that know. I gave you, um, I is need it in the signature? a signature on those oh, this here. evening because I have to submit this tomorrow morning. Um, um, and then if I... If you don't mind me taking just a couple more minutes, the, this last item is very short. Sure. Um, the MVP 2.0 grant is also something that um, we would like to ask for your approval to submit. Um, this is a two-year grant. There is no match required for it. No town funds required at all. Um, it provides uh, $45,000 for the first year which is basically um, working to expand our MVP core group to broaden the participation in it, um, to get training um, for folks on the, on the committee, uh, to redo our MVP plan and update it to the town's current goals and um, projects that they wanna pursue. And then $50,000 for the second year would pay for what's called a seed project. And we've already been talking in our group about um, doing something on healthy soils um, and working with farmers on that. So um, the only things that are needed on this one are approval to submit the, the grant and a letter of support, which I don't have for you tonight, but I'll get to someone um, later in the week. This one's not due tomorrow, but I need, do need the vote tonight. Um, oh, okay. Um, I will make a motion to approve of 2.0 MVP application second any further discussion all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s i i just actually have one question when um if when when is this um the 2.0 due uh it's due may 18th but i'd like if possible to submit it um this week partly because i will not be um here oh, oh yes week. no chris I, I i don't have a problem with it but what I wanted to know is if um, some of the, if we get the 2.0, would some of the outreach that we would do public outreach, would that be considered for um, some of the, you know, like the downtown outreach? Could we use 
can we have one meeting? Because when you have all these meetings, people have a tendency not to come. So could we, can we, when you write this up, can you be thinking about how do we combine? Like um, in the site feasibility study of the campus, um, Rachel from um, Berkshire Design is, is doing the delineations of the site, wetlands delineations, but she's also doing the inventory for um, invasive plants and sumac and all the junk that's along blood, Bloody Brook. And the, uh, the whole idea is to, um, so that we can remove that stuff and then plant Owen Wormser. We have that small grant from the conservation district. Owen Wormser is supposed to be like training our DPW and then it will pay for the planting of a buffer, a meadow, a pollinator meadow, buffer along Bloody Brook that will be more absorbent and mitigate any flooding. Like when we had that rainstorm and the river rose, you know, Bloody Brook rose, this, it will absorb the water faster and better. And so it's a flood mitigation along the center of town here. And so can we, part of it is educational outreach. And so can we combine like that healthy soils native outreach, whatever, with like 2.0 plus what are we doing in the literary lot? I mean, you... we'll, we'll have time to talk about okay. all of this because, you know, this wouldn't kick in until again the fall and we don't have to, to, to prescribe a scope of work for this, for this grant application either. So we can talk about it more within the MVP core group and go into those details. Okay. There's lots of lots of flexibility with this one, it seems to me. Okay. I just it would be so much better if we had goals, you know, one meeting that was more robust than all these little wimpy. <laughs> uh, well, because people just, you know, people don't have time. Yeah, no, I understand. And so it would be just more productive, I think, if we had combined goals of what we're trying to do on the campus, what we're trying to do in the Leary lot, and what is in general good for the downtown and our water, how to manage water, stormwater, yeah. um, people would might, for different interests might come. Right. So Makes you get sense. a more robust group. Yeah. The really great thing about the, the MVP 2.0 thing is that it will give us a chance to re-examine how we deal with MVP and what our goals are so that we don't right. have these kinds of you know last minute problems that we're having now. Mm -hmm. We'll have a whole year to work that out. We'll have money to pay for it. And hopefully we'll come out of that a better MVP community and 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 do better projects. Yeah, I agree. That's the idea behind it. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you for your work. I yeah. know it's been a lot and I uh, appreciate you yeah. making the efforts. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. your support. Sure. Right. Oh, Chris, thank you. I know you're going to be out late tonight. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Chris. All right, so um, anything else we got to sign? What's that? We got to sign other stuff. Or, uh, no, we haven't reached it yet. Nope, we haven't reached it yet. Okay. Yep. Um, so let's see. First item of discussion is police department HVAC bid cancellation. So you want to make a motion to? I just wanted to give you the outline. So we had a conversation with Andrea and Don and the engineer Mike from Hesner. Sorry, we had a conversation, the four of us, and went over the scope. And it makes more sense if we need to make reductions yeah. to redo the scope, put it back out to bid. So I wanted the board to formally take that vote. Um, Andrea and Mike Tres Mike Trzinski are already working on that. We will get more votes, uh, more people participating in the bid, I think, if it goes out again with a revised Potentially, scope. Potentially, but you it's never It's going to be a decam project because of the scope. and. It ha well, it based on be. the amount that right. we got our bid back for it, it does qualify for DK. Exactly. So there's a certain amount you can adjust, but we really should should follow that path because I, we now know it's it could be over 150 thousand. Yeah, and I think there were. I think I think you'll see more people bid it, just from what fingers I crossed. And is any of this um, you know, heat pump uh, eligible for the? Um, uh, what is it IRA money? Uh, Maybe in, Inflation Reduction Act money. I mean, of no. course, you know that's another subject that I'm sure they're going to talk about 
not spending the money or whatever. Yeah, but they're that. already talking. Yeah. 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 Um okay, so make a motion to um to take the um to cancel the HVAC bid for the police department. Second. Any further discussion? I actually just have one question. So we're canceling the bid, mm -hmm. even though if we had gone forward with this, we still would have had to make it through this summer. Wasn't that correct? The work yeah. couldn't we begin until yes. the okay. work couldn't yes. begin. So yeah. we're not actually going to cause any more issues than we are already going to have. The John's issue. very yeah. aware of this. Yeah. We, yeah. Because of the bidding time periods for buildings, you have to build in an extra month. Yeah. Okay. Um, plus the materials question supply chain they were a little concerned about supply chain so too. so what are do we have a plan yes. for the summer yep. yes okay so they have a plan for the summer okay. and the engineer and andrea woods are going to rework the scope and get it back because we bid. could have invited a bid protest that's what we were concerned about is make it fair and equitable yes. for everybody right so yeah we're, we had back. that part of that conversation included what to do over the summer Okay. Okay. Well, we were going to have to figure out what to do over the summer anyway. Right. So I just wanted to make that clear <laughs> or, that or have that clarified mm -hmm. because I was not sure about that 100%. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. We have a one day uh, license approval, liquor license approval for Yankee Candle. We actually have two of them. Um, one I make I make a motion for a 511.23. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tamil G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. I make a motion for June 3rd, 2023. Second. Great. Uh, so just to just for clarity uh, for the public, if they'd like to attend things, there's a girls' night out event from uh, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on May 11th. Um, and on, let's see, on June 3rd. Yeah, June. Is this the June 3rd one? Yep. Oh, yes. June 3rd is the Pride Day event. So uh, in the outdoor courtyard during normal business hours. So please come and attend. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G.I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Sure. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Scan those. Yes, you want to go scan them? Yeah, I'll scan them. All right. Do you need me to send you a scan? Do I have to sign any? Nope, that's it. It's the top. I got to sign here and here, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Great. Thank you very much. One for you there. Okay. So those are done. Um, the next item is uh, we're, we're actually going to hold in uh, till next meeting for the USDA loan approval for South Deerfield wastewater treatment. We're keeping that as kind of a running thing until we get it nailed down. We were going to do it in May, but it's actually going to be June 1st is what we're looking at. They wanted to push it a little bit later, but our our ban is going to be due on June 8th, so we're saying June 1st is like as late as we want to go. USDA apologized. They they were been closing on another loan and kind of dropped the ball on this one because they've been trying to focus on the other one. So he's been great. You know, he's grateful that we were a little flexible here. So I think June 1st will be the closing date for we the... need a separate meeting for that? No, I don't think so. No, okay. it's just one one of us goes and signs. Um, oh, okay. So we've got all the stuff to um, bond council. There's some work that uh, Lisa's working on. Sarah and Brenda have put together a bunch of stuff along with Casey. So I think we're in pretty good shape on that, on that closing right now. So had a great meeting. Just to recap, I had a great meeting at the treatment plant today uh, was our 23rd uh, building production meeting. Uh, who was on the on the phone call too? Uh, everything seems to be rolling along pretty good. We believe we're going to actually get the um, the parts that we've been waiting for electrical stuff. Yes, to get uh, to get permanent power there. Nice. So I 
I think uh, we're supposed to see that May 10th, and there's another one mid-May. We're That's supposed right. to get fingers are crossed, but right. they've okay. been hooking up temporary power. Um, yeah. So they talked long and hard today about kind of switching us out of the big aeration tank that we've been using all these years to the to the new aeration tank, and yet they were only going to do a portion of it, like a quarter of it, and that made Eric pretty nervous. So they're going to hold off a little bit longer before they do the switch over and um, so that they have both clarifiers available for like retention because they've got like 190,000 going through there like a, a day. There's just a lot of, with all the rain, there's a lot going through the plant. So they're, um, Eric was a bit nervous about swapping over the aeration tanks and everything and getting things started up. So they're going to work in the next week on a plan to make sure that that goes off without a hitch um, and wait a little longer if they need to for it to dry a bit. Um, but I think everything's moving along really good. They're, uh, they were very grateful for the change order 10. They've got stuff out to the rebar stuff already. There's uh, the, you know, the project is going along good. It should be substantially completed by May 1st, 2024. And Josh said uh, probably a lot sooner than that. For majority of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think and we're in good shape. Good. So that, that's good. Um, so Leary Lot update. And I think Chris is going to do this. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, hope everybody had a nice day. Hi. So uh, just a brief update on the Leary Lot. I think this is old news and I've announced this already, but we did receive a grant from the state DEP for $19,130 for the installation of four EV charging uh, ports at the Leary lot, okay. which would be two stations. Um, we got the same amount of money for four ports in the town hall parking lot, but that's a separate project um, right. that we just had the same grant for. Um, so that is definitely cause for celebration. Um, outstanding, we have an application that's being finalized for a competitive federal grant for level three charging. Um, that one isn't quite as set in stone. We we knew we had a good chance at the DEP one, but the, the federal one is a very competitive program, and whether we get it or not is very up in the air. Um, I'm working with John Tortolotti with Rivermore Energy uh, on uh, refining our application for that one, making sure that we have a lot of really good material in order to make our application competitive. I talk about the uh, rural census tracts within Deerfield because they're really prioritizing rural EV infrastructure, which gives us an advantage, um, and also um, some other things in terms of demographics. We are finalizing details up to get that application done later this month. Um, so a lot of good stuff going on with the EV charging, uh, and particularly in regard to where the placement of the new chargers is going to be. Casey and I actually have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, with Berkshire Brewing Company that we are going to sit down and figure out how we can have a mutually beneficial setup right. um, because we know that they've expressed some interest in kind of altering the fence on their property, maybe putting up a different structure um, to kind of invite people to go into their property once the Leary lot is finished. And right. we think that's really promising um, and can better connect downtown with their business. Um, I think that's all I have for you tonight. Um, Definitely something that is worthwhile and we're spending a lot of time on, but I'm um, excited to keep you updated on anything that keeps happening. And then we also have some purchase and sale agreements here, right, to uh, to sign? Yep, that's for the land swap. This is for the land swap. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, I make a motion that we sign the purchase and sale agreements. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Milchie, aye. They've been signed by Pam Shaw already, so we are good to go. Did I say all those in favor? Yes, yes. you did. Oh, Thank perfect. You. Thank you. Um, did you say aye? Oh, I'll okay. say aye just in case. And I'm really aye. tired. I'm <laughs> really, aye. really tired. I think you did. <laughs> good. Uh, uh, we, we just voted, Trevor. Yeah. Perfect. All three of us voted unanimously to support this. Thank you. So Thank, thank you for setting those up. Thank you, Chris, for making sure that this happened. Um, Absolutely. He's Thank enjoying you. this project. It's good. It's good. I it's think good. it's a fantastic project and I'm really excited to see what comes. Um, next item is the 350th anniversary fireworks announcement and update. Um, 
Hear ye, really, hear ye. I just want to thank Kevin. Uh, Kevin's been, um, just like he's been wonderful about making sure that the Founders Day thing is sorted out with the bell ringing. He's been wonderful about making sure that the um, stakes and snow fence and everything is collected. He's been collecting it so that we can put it up. It's. Um, I just want to say thank you, Kevin, to making sure that we have celebrations happening. Uh, I really appreciate it. I Peter Thomas called me before the meeting and said that the hole was done so that the rope can go through and we can ring the bells on Saturday. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful that you made that happen. Tomorrow we're going to do a little little bit of trim work around the hole. That way it just looks a little bit nicer. So right. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, that's. I just I was just looking to see. I just needed to take the liability away from the town because the other thought yeah. process is just Perfect. not just not feasible. That's good. Um, is there anything we have to discuss or announce on the fireworks? No, just the whole people. Hopefully, the advertisements are going out pretty soon. The good. flyers up. It's pretty okay. exciting. I, I did have one point, if it's okay. Um, so we did get an email from Chris Harris that uh, the motion that was made by the board last time in regard to accepting the state fire marshal's site plan was good, um, but he actually needed additional things in that motion. So I put that uh, request sheet from him back into the packet. The one that is on Friends of Deerfield letterhead. Um, there's a paragraph towards the bottom right above the logo that says Deerfield 350 years. Um, and it's a paragraph in there that if the board would be able to make the motion for and vote on oh, tonight, it would be really appreciative. I don't know what it is. Oh, um, I make a motion the town of Deerfield. This is um, the town of Deerfield accepts the state fire marshal's site plan for the celebratory 350th fireworks with Frontier Regional School playing fields being the prime viewing area and thereby authorizes Friends of Deerfield to work with Frontier Regional School, the Town of Deerfield Police, South Deerfield Fire District, 350th Steering Committee, 350th Parade Work Group, the Highway Department, the Recreation Committee to define and execute plans for post-parade pre uh, post pre-fireworks and firework events. Second. Second. Oh, oh, all those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. There it is. I found it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, wa uh, waiver insurance requirement for the parade participation. I think we're just going to make a motion that um, we have a we have a list of entities, and we'll make a motion to um, that the entities um, approve as submitted. approved approved as submitted for a uh, waiver of insurance. I, just, I I guess I just want to add the Deerfield Fire District and the South Deerfield Fire District to the list. Okay. Because so I um, want her version. So that we have yes. Right. Yeah, we'll get it. Yes. Get it right. I uh, um I will make that motion to waive the liability liability insurance waivers for. Um, those participating on the list and on this list in the parade. Do we have a second? Deerfield second. Fire already yes. did buy our insurance. Okay, I, we, I we, we 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 bought it ahead of time, and so right. we've already paid for it. It wasn't a bit; it was fifty bucks. It's all not, those, uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right, thank you very much. Um, and, go ahead. Yep. So Holly did ask if we could have this as a placeholder item. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, as much as you need. Yep, whatever you need. Perfect. Um, okay, and then the next item, uh, participation in the FERCOG Regional Digital Equity Plan. Yes. Do, do we want to have a first read on this and think about it, or is it yeah, something? Yeah, well, okay. the thing is, is if we're going to participate, and I asked Jessica Atwood when she sent this to me, because she sent it right after the last meeting. Um, really, it's a, so you've got several towns in Franklin County that are doing this. And it's Mass Broadband Institute launched two new programs, digital equity programs, one's for planning and one's for implementation projects. And so digital equity focuses on ensuring a community's residents have access to the internet, including uh, availability and affordability, access to devices that you would use to get to the internet, and digital skills to use the internet. So this digital equity planning program that the other communities are involved in um, would offer municipalities the ability to utilize free consulting services to create one. And the, the plan would examine the existing conditions 
and develop recommendations to address the community's needs. So from the perspective that I read Jessica's email, um, I think it isn't as heavy a lift as you might think, um, but it might help us sort of progress in areas where we may not have as much equity as we might like is or might there, want. Is there like, I'm just wondering like- Well, we wouldn't, we, it would be nice if we could get a consultant in to sort of give us an idea. Um, that was a big problem in Ashfield because usually an age gap is, is part of the issue. Like, I'll give you an example. My mother refuses to use a computer. So my dad does everything on the computer. <laughs> and it's not so much the equity piece, but there's that kind of resistance in certain age groups. So this could help us identify if we need to think about how we could do better work on that. What, so how much work does this cost us? As not, right now, it's it doesn't yeah. cost us anything. We would the board would vote to participate. Um, and it, we're, no, we I meant need staff to time. Staff time. Your time. My time. At this point, it wouldn't be as much because they'd really just be going through MBI's consulting grant process. I'm just. Um, are, are they looking at? they would be able to provide equipment for the library or the schools or, I mean, cause we have internet, right? Most of the- Most areas have internet. Right. There's a few outliers. I'm like just Sunrise wondering Apps how much of... effort we'd want to put into this if there's not a benefit. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, mean, that's up to you. I brought it to your attention. Because no, I appreciate that. I mean, I just one of the, I mean, the, I one of the frequent complaints that I get is that we have no choice, but, you know, Comcast. Yes. And that is extremely expensive. It's true. And so if we participate, is there going to be some kind of look at, at the price and that, that there is a monopoly? I that... think in this, so that's more of an implementation thing. If we're evaluating needs in not just our community, but several other Franklin County communities and working with the COG so they can help us create basically a regional plan. There's a lot of broadband that went in on in the Hilltowns, but the accessibility wasn't necessarily outlined in those broadband efforts. Um, so in some ways, this is the cog saying, hey, let's think about this from a bigger perspective. But this planning piece would maybe get us would get us the consultants we need to evaluate. The implementation is more where I would see that information coming from, Carolyn. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I just wanted to bring it to you because if there are questions, and we did receive at least one question from residents on Sunrise where they're having issues because the the road is a private road. Comcast won't build out their, their service to that road. Um, but it's a complicated thing to accept the road so that Comcast will pay for it. Um, so this kind of, that's an inequity. Well, if it doesn't take any staff time and it's something that we would benefit knowledge from, it it doesn't hurt to take to be a part it of it. It doesn't. And if if it's less heartburn inducing, um, I can talk to Jessica about that. Yeah, just see. And tell her, look, they're, they might be interested, but we need to know kind of what the commitment's going to be. Right. Because I uh, just don't want to spend time. I don't think I want to spend time either, yeah. but right. I do think about this, you know, how we fit all versions of equity into our our. If if you approaches could, if, if, if you could ask them, yeah. you know, to verify staff time mm -hmm. required to participate, and then also say the two problems that we have are the private road issue with sunset or sun what, sunrise sunrise I mean excuse me, um, and then also that that we have a monopoly issue that's with a Comcast, big question in several towns which you know there it's you, if you want cable this is what your choice is and you have to pay and it, and it's extremely expensive so um you know if the if if they feel like i mean i'm okay if those kind if those mm -hmm. two issues are going to be addressed okay cuz i definitely want to ask her about the comp right other, like, other, yeah other... the time commitment's very important it when she and i talked it didn't seem like it was a huge amount of time but functionally, sometimes that doesn't happen towards the tail end of when they start these planning processes. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, so, yeah. my, my, again, my concern is your time because we, you know. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, There's going, a lot on going on already. On. So, yeah, I'll ask her. Yeah, And, it's and like if it comes back where we're not going to have to spend a huge amount of time 
um, is the board interested or do you just want yeah. to put it off? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. fine with It that. says time is running out. So, I mean, yeah, maybe right. we could decide this next meeting. I mean, I don't know if that's just. They probably want it next week, but if, yeah. if yeah. we're not there, we're not there. Yeah, I, I mean, just, I, I thought it might be useful because digital equity is one of the things that they're trying to build, especially um, as part of diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts all around the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have any problem participating, but, you know, if other people need more time to think about it, and mm -hmm. do we have an opportunity to, to say we want to participate, or can we do it by consensus? Um, if we, I, I'm okay if as long as you, as think long as the time commitment is, yeah, acute. that's the major. And she's got to give me. me a measuring tool yeah. of what that is. Yep. So um, based on consensus, I was wondering if we just want to say um, authorize Casey to participate, yes, make a decision exactly. to participate, as long as she believes the commitment of time is not going to be burdensome. Yep. Okay. I'll second yep. that motion. Yeah. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um. So the next item is um, receipt of complaint about drainage on 215 Conway Road. I've looked at the photos and the emails, and I think the idea is for us to send a letter to the state on behalf of the resident um, and just requesting some help again. for. Yes. So Chris drafted you a letter yep. this afternoon. Yep. Um, essentially, the way I understand it, and Kevin can step in and see if I'm clear on this. But the suggestion was to have the board forward the request uh, on behalf of the resident to DOT and ask them to work with the resident to, to fix the issue. Because it is, Conway Road is actually 116, right, Kevin? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, that's all, that's 116, so that's all state. Right. Right. Um, I believe that the the comment was it makes more sense for it to come from the town in support of the resident to make a better case for the residents issue with DOT. Um, okay. And so, so the letters in your signature file, if you want to yep. pass it around so people can read it. I, I will make it's a fairly motion. succinct. I will make a motion that we um, send a letter on behalf of um, the resident on Conway Road. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Casey, would you just reach out to the, um, the lady? Yeah. And make, yeah. Sure, and make sure that she knows that we're doing this. Yep, yep. So uh, let's see, then the, um, we've done the appointment for Deb already. I mean, the, the resignation the, for, yeah, for the Deborah. Yeah, vacancy, accepted her resignation. And then there's a couple of um, mail items that we could read through. One was the, Drainage, and then um, Stephen Pitchers put a request about putting berms at the treatment plant. We cannot uh, put berms; we don't have the space. He was talking about berming, like all the way out along the field to hide the, the whole place. We are going to do some work in conjunction with the neighbor, and Kevin's already been working on that with the neighbors about creating some buffer because we had to take down some trees for the for the headworks plant uh headworks building so they're working that plan out and there'll be some uh letters written and approved by council for that but we don't have space going i mean it looks like you have all this space to build a berm down but the the treatment plant only has like a couple of feet from the fence to where the other property is we don't own the other property so we can't berm all the way down there but um it's getting cleaned up and it'll look it'll look nice when it's it will done. it's I mean, just it's, you can't do it right now yeah the it's project's not mul done. multiple years of construction it's and we've got another year to go so once that's done it'll clean up quite a bit over the next short time so what do you want the response to woody to be just is... that we, we don't have the space to do that kind okay. of work and that we are already going to do uh some work in conjunction with the neighbor once once the project's complete and then they'll probably notice quite a bit of cleanup over the next several months as most of that other work is getting done okay you know a lot of the equipment's going to go out and um they still working on the north aeration or the south aeration tank but um a lot of the stuff is going to mm -hmm. be completed pretty yep. quick we're, we're hoping to have the the berm between the neighbor and the plant done like i'm hoping like within the next 60 days yeah yeah, you know, it's, it's just basically we're just reutilizing the the material that's there, putting the berm up higher so that way she gets uh, quicker results. Yeah, um, light whole nine yards. Um, 
you know, because you do a small berm and you put a arborvitae in it, you know, we'll all be long and dead before it does anything for anybody. Right. Um, we've got the material, we have the ability. Waterline is being extremely helpful uh, with this entire process. Um, and, you know, they're like, hey, whatever you need us to do, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. So um, I just had to put a plug in for Waterline because they were, like I said, they seem like they've been bending over backwards for us. So, yeah. You know, it works. They, they're happy to work with us because of how we are, but you know, I think that's why we get more out of them. To be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. There was um, a letter from Ava Gibbs about the library plant sale concerns. I, I'm not fully up to speed on that. Did um, wanna... What What is a concern is that um, these jumping worms are spreading and they're potentially very invasive and and they're and they're very detrimental to. Um, Good soil. So, um, what there's nothing regulatory that we can do at all, but we could urge the library trustees to be mindful of this new threat and um, ask that when plants are donated for to the sale, that um, the soil is is. We I understand that people don't want to do bare root because. You yeah, know, you have to die. water them and stuff, but you can knock the soil away so that the roots are exposed and that any of the casings of the, like, you know, pre, pre you know, I don't want to say baby worms, but the pre-worm and also the worms are knocked off. And so if- Is this a major issue we're seeing similar? Yes. I've not seen it's, this it's, anywhere. It's brand new. It's well, I don't want to say it's brand new. It's been a it, few it's years. something that's been in the south, in southeastern the south, state. And it's and it's, way up yes, there. it's part We've of got the a, change. Looks like I got a hand up from oh, oh, yeah. oh, it might be yeah. Ava. It might be Ava. Ava, can you can you give a good background on this, please? She's muted, but you're muted. Oh, there you, go. you hear me now? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Yes, we can hear okay, you. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry to add one more thing to your agenda. No problem. <laughs> So actually, you know, this is not a new thing. They have been, they have been even in the Northeast and the Midwest for decades. But for whatever reason, they've just, there's many reasons. They've, they have just increased like crazy. So because I have them, um, I'm, I'm very aware of what's going on. It was totally uh, confirmed by the extension service that we have them. It came in October 2021, but we've had them for years. Everybody, a lot of people have them. Extension actually told me that probably around Beaver Drive and the beginning of Sugarloaf, this is really uh, quite scary to me because of the Pocumptic Ridge. So here's the thing. These all worms, all worms are bad for the woods, okay? You know how they're great for our gardens and we've all loved them for years and years, but all worms are bad for woods. But these particular invasive worms, which have multiplied like crazy, they're called, some people call them Asian jumping worm, but we don't want to use that anymore. So we just say jumping worms, all right? They are different. In, if you've read the letter, they are like earthworms on steroids. Steroids, I'm not exaggerating. By the way, I should tell you that I have a certification in master gardening, okay? Which mm -hmm. I got. So anyway, these increase like crazy very they're very fast breeders you own they don't need to have a male and a female uh they can increase you know just by any one of them can increase they lay something called cocoons the cocoons are practically indestructible i mean this is phenomenal you will hear about them people right. have heard about them if you look at the letter that i sent the links are from many, many states. They're very well known. So I hate to say this to the library and the trustees because I know that this is a long tradition. I know this is a fundraiser and it's a wonderful thing. And actually, as I noted in my letter, I myself many years ago donated plants to this plant sale, okay? So, but these are not the same times. These things are so invasive. I think Carolyn and I, have talked about this and where you're where you really don't want them is in the woods where they do the most damage um i don't know if you want me to go into all the details of what they do in the woods they just eat all the organic matter and they leave behind their uh castings which you say oh castings they're good well they're not good 
because they leave so much behind and they um, they mineralize the soil. And then if, if the woods are on a slope, the rains just wash away all those castings and they, um, they end up in rivers. They just continue to, well, not in the Connecticut maybe, but in smaller rivers. In any case, this is the worst one of the worst ways and common ways that these worms spread is through plant sales. So I am asking I, the trustees to either discontinue this whole thing, that would be the best probably, or they can do bare root plant sales, which in my letter, I, I shared one of the extension services, um, it's not a suggestion, it's how you do a bare root, what you do. You have to actually take the, I'm sorry, Carolyn, it's not even that simple. You've got to get rid of those little tiny um, cocoons. You guys probably don't, even, I have in two and a half years, I have never seen a cocoon in my bare eyes. That's how small they are. They're round and they're the size of a sesame seed and they're this, the same color as the soil. So you couldn't even find them. So unless you take the roots of this plant and swish it in a bucket of water, every single plant, and then sell it that way. And then what you do with that water, believe it or not, is you have to strain it. Maybe you'll find the, um, the cocoons or not. The cocoons is how they spread. They're almost indestructible. They only will die. They last three, four, five years. They will, um, Maybe what they'll die is three days at 104 degrees. I don't know if you're understanding the what is going on here. So anyway, I, I know this is very long and technical, but um, if you have any influence uh, on the trustees in the library, you will ask them not to do this because we're just spreading it around. I don't know who comes and who gives plants. See, the people who give plants, they may not realize that they have... Um, you know, the jumping worms, and then you're just spreading them all over Deerfield and other towns or whoever's coming to buy them. So this is, um, as soon as I became aware of this, I don't know if they must have had a plant sale last year or was it COVID related and they didn't? I don't know. I don't have I said enough? Remember. Is that, um, do you need more information? No, that's enough. Uh, one question. So what are you seeing for damage at your, at your house? Like, oh my God. What do they, what, how do you notice that you have them? Well, you notice them because they're little, you know, where they, where they um, poop, essentially, you have castings, right? right? So you have these little middens. They're like tiny little, tiny little hills. And they look like, some people call them um, coffee grinds, but I would say they're more like ground meat, okay? Yeah. That's when you see the castings. And what they do is they eat all the organic matter and the, so they ate all my compost. I mean, they're just, there is no compost in my soil. I have to keep adding more and more. Last year's an experiment from the year before. I didn't add any. And of course, without adding any compost to my very sandy soil on River yeah. Road, yeah, um, it was very dry. So they, they've already spread throughout like our entire, they spread very quickly. They just, you know, like worms, right? Yeah. Um, so in, I guess you could, in a garden or a landscape, uh, people, okay, when you have a, the really, the only reason I don't have a huge bad, bad case of it is because I do two things. I literally dig out worms. I'm on my hands and knees <laughs> and I'm digging out the worms and I'm throwing them in a little bucket of alfalfa meal which is a saponin, it dries them up. Okay. People who, people who have a lot of them, like they can walk on their lawn and they'll they'll go down six inches to a foot because it's that, you know, it's that loose and they've eaten the roots of of the grass. I see. Okay. Uh, okay. So but but the worst, I'm gonna say this again, the worst problem is when they start spreading to the woods. And that's right. what we want to try. I mean, there is nothing you can do. I'm hoping that they'll do a lot of research. Yeah. Um, they're already, as far as this Professor Olga from the Extension Service, she said that they were already around Sugarloaf. But I, you know, 
I can't spend my entire time <laughs> doing, I haven't asked DPW, what are they doing about it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, Ava, is there enough information? That's enough. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ava. <laughs> what you wanted to hear about worms? No, I'm you want to know about worms, but afraid to ask. Carolyn, mm -hmm. what do you do every day. Yep. Um, so, like I said, Ava, we don't have regulatory powers on this. Right. Um, I would make a motion that we encourage the library to um, be aware, be aware, and be vigilant, and try to mitigate this issue as best they can okay uh yeah and and i'll second that and i'll just say that um i think candace bradbury carlin's response to ava's email was um very you know willingness to consider yeah. and and so maybe the uh, maybe the library um trustees can think about this for future and maybe they'll come up with a different fundraising yeah, effort. Sounds good. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Ava. Thank you. Ava, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you very much. So the, uh, let's see, I think that is, oh, there were a couple other things in here. There was um, enrollment data from Smith. Uh, did we need that at all? Yeah, we'll look. $20,000. Three invoices, right? Uh, Wait, where did you say that? There was some Smith College uh, info in here in the mail. Um, Smith Folk? Smith, uh, Smith Folk. Folk, sorry. Yeah. Smith Folk. <laughs> Smith it's Folk. almost like Smith College. Yeah, just about. Yeah. <laughs> so it's $20,000 uh, per student, right? Yeah. So there's October. Okay. So we knew this already. This is just we telling us. Coming, yep. They hadn't at the time we finalized the budget. They hadn't finalized the um, tuition. The, the tuition, but we know that there's. But we covered. We, four, we right? Enough to cover. We're still waiting. They haven't made a decision. They haven't. Get, okay, got it. All right. What That's we good. did was the best we could with the information yep. we had. And we then, have to make an adjustment. Uh, Brenda and I will bring it to you guys for um, anything that has to go to town meeting. Okay. And then Colonial Power, um, we. have We've approved the the um, we talked about this last time the Dynergy uh, uh, the yes electrical aggregation and took part in that and and we did the same kind of setup we had the year before. Of course, yep. prices are up. Everybody knows the prices are prices up. prices are up and the contract is only twenty four months right because, because nobody's bidding three nobody years out bid beyond that exactly. So we're doing the best we can and yep. Uh, that's fine. And so thanks to good. Tim for helping yes. us the, di the day of town meeting. Yes, very Ooh. much appreciate that work. Um, it was so fun. that information <laughs> will go out to people, right? They've mailed that. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Any? Um, so, so do they send a mailing to each household? They do. They do. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yep. 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 And, Just like last. I mean, people can opt out if they want. We, um, we're going to put it with our seal on it so people know yes well, it's, yep. it's right up here okay. yep exactly so it says, okay because mm -hmm. i know there was so much confusion last time yeah, yeah i think there'll be a little bit more now that they've been in it for a couple and the of other, years the other thing we need to do is just explain to them that um you know this this new rate is for next year it's not going to kick in this year so you're still going to be enjoying your nine cents right you know nice. uh, until the end of december. until the end of december right and, That's a good and my understanding is that um we have additional towns that wanted to join yes because they were paying yeah two towns two towns did came, we went from 13 to 15 participants and two of the i think leverett and i'm not sure who the other town was they were paying 30 cents yeah. in wow. at various points Wait, because um you know they just great deal for them yeah so they're they're Happy thrilled with the the new right. rate right. exactly <laughs> or whatever it is yeah okay any um do you Want to hit on anything, Casey, uh -huh. or do we? I did. I wanted to go over. All right. Then so our new assistant treasurer collector is starting on Monday. Welcome. Um, so if you guys are wandering around, say hi to him. We definitely will. Um, Brenda, me, council, our financial consultant, Sarah, we're all working on the USDA loan documents. So yep. I had said to Trevor, um, today because we weren't we put that USDA loan on just in case we were ready for it more than likely we're going to see the board having to take some action on that at the next meeting 
Um, there's several documents that council has to produce, so that's already gone out and she's working on that. Um, but there's other documents that we have to give to her so she can affirm um, her signatures on several of these things. And I think the close date is in early June before the ban is in due. So I want to say, I was just looking for the note from Jordan Pinal, Trevor. Yep. Um, I think he said June 6th, right? He wanted June 6th, but we're going to push back for June uh, June 1st, if we can, because okay. our our because other closing is, is on yeah. the 8th. Yeah, it's it just kind of really eight, tight. Give us a lot of time. It doesn't. Okay. So it, I know that. So it may be a couple of days in between that or okay. something, but I think we're we're hoping to keep it at the first or close to that as we can. Right, and that's okay as long as we're we've got everything yeah. in a good orbit. We have Brenda and Sarah and I have a meeting with Newbies on Monday. Yep. Um, so we can go over what their requirements are going to be. Yeah. So we'll try to get there for that. We'll keep you posted on that. Yep. Um, I did want to congratulate everybody who got reelected or elected. Um, I will ask you, so I got an email from Annie Curtis. Um, I may have to get you guys to go revisit the special municipal employees list because there was a question that came up as to whether certain um, officials were on that special municipal employees list. Do, does anybody remember when we did that last submission to, I think it was the Secretary of State's office? Or the AG's office, one of the two. It's been a while. It's been a since two years, probably. Okay. So we may have to revisit that. I told her I would get back in touch with her about it. Okay. Um, and then there's been several email chains about various subjects and, you know, working on some of the work for the master plan, some of the work for, like Chris has been talking about, the um, Leary Lot discussion and... Chris, did you touch on the infrastructure work that Eversource has to has to do and submit to us? I did not. So, um, yeah, we are waiting a little bit on uh, Eversource and some of their determinations on what the cost difference would be between uh, locating the chargers closer to where the existing one is at the front entrance of the lot versus... Uh, placing them in the preferred location, which is adjacent to the Berkshire Brewing Company's fence. Oh, okay. um, so depending on the outcome of that, if it's going to be a huge difference, we might reconsider some of the preferred designs, but um, yep. we're yep. waiting on Eversource for that matter. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know, because I thought about it as he was talking. Have we heard anything about the... Um solar field i know eversource was still studying that i just you know yes you have i okay. have um, all right because i finally got smart and talked about green black right so hold on a second henry i would that's what i wanted to talk to you about when my oh. email was being really freaking slow all right um basically sorry to drag that <laughs> no no no, no. I'm, 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 i've got another thing i gotta do just, after this just, so oh, like, fine. julie I, I feel so bad julie, julie just, wants to talk yeah. to tim and i yeah. Oh, 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 um, I'm sorry, Julie. Talk at the meeting here? here. No, no. Just, oh, okay. Just, afterwards. Okay. Uh, we'll move it away. Yeah. So what they're I'm doing is to. they're submitting the site plan. <laughs> so they sent it to me. I haven't reviewed it. I got it this morning. Okay. Um, essentially, they there's some changes that they're going to need to make to it. So they want to try to get it submitted to DEP this week. Right. And then they'll proceed with the other application processes we have to do. All right. But I think this is, forward. this is, yeah. That's great. Because I, thought this was Beth, I don't know when. how Beth framed this, but she did a great job of, yep. of getting them. So they're preparing the site plan review, but first they have to do this DEP stuff. Okay. And I have to sign off on it. So yep. that was one of the reasons I wanted to let you know that, yeah. you know, it seems like there's some, yeah. um, some impetus now. So I'll sign off on that so they can get it to DEP. And then when we get more information about the site plan application, we'll have to sign off on that as well um, because they have to go through the site plan process. Um, so he'll let me know when they have that ready. Okay. Um, but at least we know that the, the study process took longer than anybody wanted, but it seems like we're moving in a more positive direction now. So Sounds great. I'm just going to keep Beth, you know, 
on my speed dial list yep. because she's she did her and I said to her you know if we needed if Lisa and she and I need to sat, sit down and talk we could um but her Henry's response was pretty fast considering okay okay anything else we're good I think we're okay now there's okay. there's Just several you know. documents that we're going to have to start doing so Brenda and I once we get through the push on the loan yeah we're going to start working on closing um closing the fiscal year, doing the transfers. Right. She's yep. got a preliminary list working. So I saw that. He and I are going to work through that. Yeah. Um, it looks we want to get good. in a better orbit with the USDA loan so that we can meet that June 1st to June 6th, you know, deadline. It looks like there's about 80,000 in transfers and she thought some could be in her yeah. in her department. And then yeah. we check with the legal is going to be the biggest one. Yeah. That's around so, 50. Yep. Uh, and she is an estimate for that. Okay. So all things considered, if we're, if we're pretty, stable um i'm hopeful <laughs> i'll entertain a motion to adjourn of my last meeting i'm chairing of 2023 no, make i just it. want one thing to casey to put on the agenda for our next meeting well you're Which, chair now you can do anything you want well i i mean <laughs> but i want you guys to participate <laughs> the the reason i would like us to go over our year calendar and um our priority list like Focus yep. on the Elyria lot. I mean, yep. I just want to make sure that we have a little bit more organization for Casey um, and direction so that we can try to get at least the Leary lot done as soon as yep. possible. Sounds good to me. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, Trevor's last meeting of the current <laughs> current cycle of uh, being the yes. chair. Great. I'll second that motion. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all so much. See you in three years. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>